What's up, Nameless fans? We are back again for some Nameless Umbra action. Today, in the Aegis Protectors League, they're going to be taking on Dorado Gaming Espelon. My name is Lindor, here with Crims, and we are ready for this game. Crims, there's a lot on the line here for this match. Both of these teams, with a win here tonight, would lock their spot into playoffs, so both teams are going to be coming out fighting. Yeah, and if you know if you've ever been into a league before, getting that lock-in spot really makes you feel safe and comfortable, and lets you experiment, try things out, potentially let you power yeah. up for the playoffs. So, very coveted spot to be locked in. And the earlier you get it, the more practice, the more secure you feel. Mm -hmm. And then you know, there's a lot of consequences to that. Maybe you start snowballing into a lot of early wins and stuff like that. So, I think both teams here really want that. And Winning this series, winning the first game, is going to be an important step there as well. Yep. So interested to see these these two teams on the first game of the day, what they're going to pick, any surprises they're going to throw at each other. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think we're gonna we're gonna take a look at our top lane first. We're gonna talk about our boy. No bias here on the caster desk. <laughs> we're gonna talk about Orion here, and I have to say, Nars such a safe pick, Lindor. So I think oh, you know, having that really strong top side pick that you know you mm -hmm. could set up for the rest of the team is pretty important piece to a good team comp puzzle yeah orion on that nar definitely has been a key piece um for this umbra squad um before we do jump into some of the nitty-gritty getting down into this specific matchup i think there's a couple things maybe we should cover first first okay. of all there has been a big patch that did just come oh. out so we can kind of touch on a few of those things and i also just wanted to for any viewers out there who don't know kind of how aegis runs their leagues basically how it works is the top two teams from each division get locked into playoffs immediately then the uh, four fo teams following that have to go into a qualifying tournament. So this would mean uh, a win here for either team would lock them into those top two spots, and then they don't have to go through that qualifying tournament with kind of their playoff hopes uh, on the line. So definitely an important game here to lock in. Like you say, would give them some kind of flexibility to be able to maybe try some new things in the next couple of weeks leading up into those playoffs. Um, so that for sure. And then as we are just kind of getting some ready checks here, maybe Crims, you can touch on a couple things in the patch that you think might be more impactful here tonight. Yeah, so it looks like both teams are running up, so you're going to get my super quick rundown. The TLDR. The TLDR, Master Yi is broken, although I don't think enough teams have enough practice to be putting that on the field, so I'm not <laughs> expecting it, but you know what? If someone's a Master Yi one trick, maybe yeah. they're putting it on the on the field, giving that YOLO for that victory there. So, Sivir is pretty good utility. AD carry surprise hasn't been played as much. Poke has been nerfed, but mm -hmm. honestly, I would like to see this pick because... It provides so much engage possibilities for your team. Yeah. Um, some important things like meta, like Corky. Corky's still going to be okay. Super useful in the game still. Fiddlesticks, underutilized pick. And maybe some people are out there thinking Gwen is going to be nerfed into the ground. Your worries are not founded. She is still an extremely strong top lane pick. Hmm. Going to be no problem. Nar plays pretty well into her, by the way. And then... <laughs> Last but not least, Olaf is pretty much getting a huge hit in the top lane there. So right. I think that's just the most important things. Oh, I, you know what? I almost forgot. Volibear. True. This, this bear has been facing criminal, criminal nerfs from Riot. But you know what? I think it's still going to receive play just because of the, the tools in his kit. But unfortunately, Volibear, you know, he's a real feast or famine champion. And this, mm -hmm. this patch is going to make it even worse. Absolutely, as we're jumping into the bands here right away. Um, for those of you who haven't noticed just yet, unfortunately for Dorado Gaming, they have to have an e-sub here uh, for their games tonight. I'm not sure if they're going to have that for all three games, but definitely here for game one. So they are unfortunately suffering a loss of two bands in the first round. So they're only going to get to ban one champion away. Nameless Umbra, though, taking away the Renata, taking away the Lilia, both very strong, prominent meta champions right now, and the Gangplank mm -hmm. for some of that top lane scaling also not going to be uh, available here. I wonder if they're not thinking about the Nar pick because Nar does play into Gangplank pretty well. That uh -huh. being said, Gangplank can scale against <laughs> Nar. It is possible, but Nar gives you a lot of time and he can hold down the Gangplank while you run the rest of the map. That being said, I, I think Nameless, uh, I think they should have banned two junglers. I think they should have mm. because that's that E sub position. I would have played right. dirty. I'm a bastard. That's what <laughs> I would have done. And I'm looking and I'm seeing their, their sub has some pretty strong win rates on Zen and Viego. So I would have right. went for that. We'll see what they pick up first here. 
I'm thinking that you know, picking you like you say they like to pick strong bot side. I was gonna say 80 carry pick sounds pretty good to me, and they're okay. picking the Siver. Yeah, Ooh, just what you relevant. wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Getting what you wished already there, Krims. Yeah, I'm excited to see the Siver for sure. For those of you um, who kind of didn't read those patch notes, there was a lot of changes. Um, but just to kind of get a brief rundown, they much more have pushed her into the crit build. Her Q now can scale off crit. Um, her W can bounce to the same target twice, so you can get some extra damage with some of the ricochets there as well. And her W actually is an attack speed steroid as well, so that's kind of a, a big change there. Um, we'll see how that one does fare. Twitch going to be locked in. Twitch Zillion could be the potential answer here from Dorado. Okay, if they do lock in the Zillion, that is a very punishable bot lane. Of course, though, if it does get that opportunity to scale, will be a absolute monster. Twitch going to do lots of AoE damage. Yep. And also be able to 1v1 the AD carry at any point in time. All you have to do is just go stealth mode, walk up to the AD carry, and you pretty much win every 1v1. So they are going to lock that in. So that is extremely punishable bot lane, especially before level 6. Yeah. And, I mean, if we're predicting that Nameless Umbra is going to be focused bot side, I think that this is playing into their skill set if they opt for it though so maybe pick some more strong winning bot side matchup and a strong jungler and that might be a really good formula for success brom coming through so that's going to be the answer can of course block a little bit of that aoe damage that we see out of the twitch can kind of protect this sivir a little bit more than maybe something um that's more engage heavy so kind of like to see that one come through um yeah we haven't seen so much bot side focused for Umbra. I think for the most part, they have been more of a top focused team, but we'll see if in this game, like you say, they can kind of flex around, take advantage of maybe this weak early game that Dorado has drafted for themselves in the bot side. And the Rek side there definitely can assist in some plays in the bot lane. Yeah, Rek side is a solo queue monster right now. And she she can really take over a game, absolutely you know, bursting out champions you wouldn't expect and has a lot of control in the jungle area because you know that passive gives her so much free vision it will utilize for smart plays you got to have a brain to play rek'sai which is you know it's exciting to see one on the field here with zach being the counter pick here it looks like they're going to try wow. to scale that's a lot of scaling factors for the side of dorado here yeah Absolutely. Zillion, a Twitch, and now the Zac all really do want to get some levels and get some items before they are jumping into some of those crazier team fights. Zac, of course, can provide a lot of good engage for this team. You can kind of get the Twitch stealthing in, get the Zac to jump on, and then have the Twitch kind of capitalize on some of the CC that can come through. And so, yeah, I think we're starting to see kind of a, a story b beginning to develop here. Nameless Umbra with the Rek'Sai wanting to play a little bit more for the early game and trying to snowball things early on. Dorado Gaming definitely indexing heavily into some more scaling and some more team fighting here. So we'll see how that does continue uh, through the draft. Vagar going to be taken away, not wanting to see uh, that cage coming down and blocking <laughs> any sort of Zac yeah. coming in over the top. So I think that one's a smart ban there as well. And we'll probably see a lot of solo lane bans as we don't. I haven't seen a single solo lane pick just yet. Yeah, both teams opting to hold on to their solo picks for later. So usually that's going to end up with one solo later taking the short end of the stick and the other one yeah. getting the better of that, <laughs> unfortunately, for one of those solo laners. However, that being said, I think we have some pretty ideas of what both teams already want to do. They've pretty much both showed their hands. So I think we're gonna we're gonna want to see picks that supplement those choices here. So Nameless Umbra looks like they got a heavy focus top uh, bot side. So maybe take a chill pill on the top top lane, and then something that's more of a facilitator for the mid lane role here. And I think that's a good angle for them. On the mean side, Dorado they need Ooh. some early game because they can't lose everywhere on the map. I think that's gonna cause them take a massive hemorrhages in the early game. So Nar pretty safe blind pick for the top side here. Yeah. Gonna we'll pick see that one. They can round out with. But I think they got the team fights on lock for Dorado Gaming, yeah. especially with that Nar lock in here. Yep, Nar for some follow up after the Zach jumps in. You know, hopping over their head, slam them into the wall. Lots of CC chain uh, and some AOE damage coming through out of that one. They're also picking that one away from Orion. You know, kind of a, a pretty solid comfort pick for him is kind of his most played so far this season. 
But that does mean that he knows how to play against it. He knows its weaknesses. He knows how to take advantage of maybe some mistakes and some missteps from the NAR. So we'll see what he wants to go with here. Obviously, I think, uh, you know, Camille, Aurelia, kind of some of those heavy gap close damage oh. champions are going to be best into this NAR in terms of the laning matchup. And it is the Camille coming through for the Orion. I think Camille's pretty solid pick here. It's going to win eventually into NAR. Of course, NAR gets to the better of that matchup in the early game. However, you have a guaranteed engager on the Twitch. So that means that yeah. Twitch will not be able to escape too easily. Probably will eventually pop that zillion ultimate. We are just going to assume it's going to be on the Twitch for obvious reasons here. Mm -hmm. And with a Rek'Sai side to back it up, that makes a lot of sense. Ooh. And here we have an Akshan mid lane pick. So that is a facilitating champion. It's not as heavy as something like TF does win the lane more than TF will. However, I think we notice a lot of uh, a certain type of damage for yes. the side of Nameless Umbra here. <laughs> Absolutely. And while there aren't too many tanks yet for Dorado Gaming, there is a Zac and there is a Nar. Those are some frontline that can build straight armor and will become very, very tanky. Um, if, you know, they're indexing into that armor, of course. So we'll see how that does play out. The Braum adds a little bit of magic damage um, with kind of the concussive blows coming through and stuff like that. But overall, yeah, very, very AD heavy here for Nameless Umbra. Double AD carry comp. It's, you know, Akshan in the mid lane, Camille up top. Mm -hmm. There's there's not a, a single little ounce of AP here that I can really find. On the other side, a little bit more well-rounded, right? Ari now coming through as the final pick, going to be a safe laning champion, going to provide, uh, you know, some utility, some peels, and even some damage here in, out of the mid lane role. And I kind of like the composition that we're seeing Dorado Gaming put together here. Yes, I think Dorado Gaming has a more uh, rounded out comp, but I think they have indexed in backline damage dealers here with the twitch and the ari that's mm -hmm. basically their only source of damage on the on this team here so i mean then it's mostly twitch on top of that so if twitch ever dies in these team fights it's going to be a huge piece for their team being taken out so mm -hmm. you have to play really well around the twitch make sure that he's going to be safe has access to damage on the enemy team here and you know ari nar and zach is a lot of champions to buy space space with so i'm not saying it's impossible they mm -hmm. just have to coordinate that dance very well yeah they have to coordinate correctly they have to make sure that they know where the rexi is and where the camille is make sure there's not any sort of crazy flanks coming through you already talked about the zillion alt so they do kind of have that get out of jail free card for the twitch um, so we'll see if, yeah, like you say, they can kind of play the game within the game, keep the Twitch alive, and then for the other side, for Nameless, they're going to have to hard focus on that Twitch, because a lot of these fights are going to kind of teeter on that tipping point. Do we kill the Twitch? Does the Zillion ult come off? Can we kill him when he comes out of the revive? Or is our team just going to get shredded by the rat -tat, tat as it comes through with some of the CC, with the Nar and the Zac, some of the engage tools that they do have? So for Nameless... In the early stages, because, you know, we've talked about how they maybe want to snowball here a little bit. So for this Rek'Sai specifically, you talked about maybe wanting to play towards the bot side because this Twitch and the Zillion, excuse me, are so weak. But I kind of feel like the Camille and the Akshan also want to play aggressively through the early stages. So what's kind of your read on this composition as a whole? And what do you think the Rek'Sai's goals should be? Yeah, I think that um, the Camille and the Akshan will eventually win their lanes. But I think the key difference between the top and mid and the bottom lane here is when you start winning that matchup. And Camille against Nar, we all know that melee into range, it's mm -hmm. going to take time for that to flip over into Camille's favor there. So eventually she'll get the all in, but not right away. And the same goes for Akshan into Ari. But they're, you know, they're, that matchup's a little, uh, you know, flip flops multiple ways, right? So level three, it's going to go to Akshan, depending on certain scenarios and Ari as well. But, the, but I think Akshan does really well is navigating the map right with that passive with the invisibility we'll be able to get into position to affect the bot lane so that being said ari with a nice charm with the setup from zach will certainly be able to kill auction i think that is a possibility for dorado gaming to play through play through the mid lane into bot side i think that works for them as well so there is i think the cool thing about dorado gaming is they have a lot of angles so they could potentially start off top side use the NAR advantage to uh, to get topside wins and pass that to the rest of the field or mid lane. For for what I'm thinking for Nameless though, they're going to have to take a back seat in the top and mid game or mid lanes and then that utilize that bot lane early to take the dragons and possibly kill the Twitch in lane. 
put that twitch on the back foot, snowball some dragons, and try to prevent some of that scaling from coming through as much as possible. Delay those power spikes from the twitch. I like it. I like the game plan there. One thing that I'm noticing here, uh, we thought that it was a jungle sub for Dorado Gaming. Looking um, at the champ select here, it's actually Septi playing in the top side. So is going to be a top lane uh, oh. substitute, which makes more sense, because looking at Septi's uh, OPGG here, he is much more a top lane player than a jungler, so yes. makes a little bit more sense there that way. So yeah, good to note that we're going to see hybrid carry in the jungle. I think that's uh, going to be a little bit more comfortable for them, and we'll see how Septi does fare in this Nar and Camille matchup as well. Yeah, and uh, you know, this interesting matchup you see here with the Rek'Sai and Zac. Mm -hmm. Both of these champions have lots of instantaneous mobility, right? Zach has his the the slingshot. Rek'Sai has yep. got the tunnel, and I think that is going to give them a lot of abilities to get over walls for interesting gank angles. Unfortunately, right. Zach's going to take a lot longer for that. So that's why mm -hmm. we're looking here for the Taunt to to take over the game, especially in the early phases, and kill these squishy targets. So I think for Nameless Umbra, they're really happy resting on the Taunt's early game pathing to get mm -hmm. these games, you know, start to get rolling in their favor, the snowball. Yeah, I like that you point that out because the the Zack and the Rek'Sai, they both have, you know, those creative pathing angles, those creative gank paths. So definitely do have to watch out for those, you know, maybe some creative ward angles, warding camps, making sure that the jungle ca uh, tracking for both sides is quite efficient. But yeah, the, the Zack really needs level 4 or even level 5, a couple points in the E before those ganks are really going to come to fruition. So that kind of gives the Taun a little bit of space in the early game to try and dictate the map, maybe get a couple of kills going, at least grab first blood for the team. We'll have to see if they can execute on that plan because, like we say, this uh, late game team fighting from Espizlon, excuse me, uh, <laughs> is going to be very, very formidable. So if they can delay that, if they can delay three items on the Twitch as long as possible, that is going to be where they're going to be feeling the most comfortable here for Nameless Umbra. We're going to take a short break here as we do load onto the Rift, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with game one. There's no soul inside us. We're all just flesh and bone.
Nameless coming in here for a potential invade for game number one. Septi gonna spot this one out. Nice boomerang gonna provide some slows. It's gonna provide enough space. So just gonna be a nice little ward coming down there. Nothing coming from that level one potential invade there from Nameless. Just a little bit of information gonna be gathered. We'll see if Hybrid is gonna grab a ward on the opposite side. He will do exactly that. So trade of information here on both sides as we enter game one. My name is Lindor here with Crims. It is Nameless Umbra on the blue side, Dorado Gaming on the red side in this battle for a playoffs berth. Yeah, Lindor helping everyone out with short-term memory loss. That <laughs> as we have Dorado just doing a very safe start. Unfortunately, I think they could have put down a little bit more wards for more information, but both teams going to see each other's starts. As we have Hyper Carry heading towards the top side, and Titan is going to be heading towards the top side here. And interestingly enough, I think that means that for the timer for Box, it's going to be a little bit delayed. It's going to be about four, maybe even five minutes. So I think both. Both teams should be able to predict at least somewhat a clear path for both junglers as Zach is going to be wanting to full clear all the way to the map here. Yeah, that is kind of expected. Nice little uh, late ward on this Raptor Pit from Orion is going to spot out the fact that Hybrid actually did skip his Krugs. So going to go for a 5 camp clear instead of a 6 camp clear. The Taunt on the other side went red immediately into his top side. So maybe looking for a reverse full clear here into that bot side gank that you were kind of wanting them to be setting up early on. That means both junglers might be on the bot side of the map at the same time. So we'll have to see if we do get a sort of kerfuffle around this bot lane. But we'll see exactly where these do end up pathing for us. You know, I think from the invade upside, maybe the plan for Nameless Umbra is to get Camille started early. Nar is going to be in his mega form, which he's going to be better at fighting, but worse at getting away. Hookshot goes a little wide. Ignite going to be burned, the and Septi... Here. His level 3, yeah, Ignite is down. Should be an easy pick up here. Jungler has flash. Septi has flash as well. That's going to be the flash coming through. Looking to provide some space. Septi with the flash to respond. One more auto will do it. Is there a Q? Oh. No, Septi survives with a sliver of HP. Flashes are going to be traded. Potential regank opportunities. Yeah, that's just one of those things you got to feel out uh, when you're playing the game. Like, hey, they invaded topside kind of a bit weird. And then you see Rek'Sai immediately pathing out the top. Of course, we have we were privy to that information. So just keyed me in that they're going for some early cheese topside. And so far, Orion does have a TP advantage. And we'll see if that's going to result in anything, but should be up in CS, theoretically. Yeah, isn't obviously right now, but we'll see no, what the wave right state now. is going to be like here. Looks like he's trying to grab a little nice freeze uh, under this tower here. Is now going to hit level 3 hookshot. Missing, though. Um, so Ryan struggling a little bit with that ability. We'll see what hybrid carry can get done on this other side. Looks like he was able to, of course, grab that scuttle crab. Maybe even steal away a couple of the chickens. So trying to punish the taunt for that early gank as much as he can. Man, that is going to be a quite hefty CS lead and EXP lead. Might be relevant later on, hard to say right now. Oh, Orion getting pretty low here. A little bit. Actually, that is definitely not worth for Septi. That was a bit of a mistake because Orion's just going to TP back in the lane. And now Septi's either going to back or be forced to lane with really low HP. So I don't think that was worth it. Did get a little bit of a heal from that Mega Nar proc, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Orion TPing back to lane here is even going to be able to... Okay, not quite able to maintain the freeze, so at least for Septi, he is able to get the wave under tower. But yeah, going to have to recall here and walk his way all the way back to lane. We'll see what Orion wants to do with this wave. We did see Thetan trying to turn his attention towards the bot side there momentarily, basically just covering them as they tried to push the wave out and grab their first reset. And we'll see what this Sivir does want to build towards. So far, it's looking like some components of a Noon Quiver, so I'm expecting it to be much more the crit-oriented Sivir build here. Yeah, and it, you know, once Sivir starts getting levels in her Q and in her bounce passive as well, should be able to take control of the lane and thus net them dragons. We'll see if that's going to be their game plan. So far, though, it looks like Umbra has been playing the top side, so probably just using, they might be using the Sivir just to chill and hold the lane and he plays on top side. Brom Realm doesn't look like he might be leading to anything. 
Potential counter gank here from Hybrid Carry. Looks like it's on, on the way here as well. Flash away from 6 degree. Looks like the Picasso procs are going to come through onto Dookie. Still looking to run for the hills. He's going to be able to be all right. So, uh, nice charm there initially from Dookie. Kind of prevented Hard Only for Bard for get to get on top of him. And the rest of the fight not really going to come up with too much for either side. Some level 6s starting to tick over here. Ultimate available for the Ari. Should shortly be coming ready here for the rest of the solo laners. Over Ryan taking over right now. Does he want to take this fight? Does have the hook hit. That's going to be the hook shot into the ultimate. The ignite is down. This should be a solo kill. Orion grabs up the first one. There you go. Looks like their game plan for getting top ahead early has begun. Getting that plan under roll. And On side though. Yeah. Oh, we have a bit of spiciness in the mid lane here. So I think you can see Umbra actually is going to be focusing top side instead. I don't think that ult's going to be enough. And unfortunately, the time not level six there certainly would have been kill if that was the case. Now I think both teams are in an okay spot. You know, Dorado just one kill on the top side, nothing crazy yet. I still think the onus is on Umbra to make a few more plays to to be more secure in the current game. State. Yeah, the first blood's going to be feeling pretty nice, but so far, Thetan not able to get in on the action. Does have his flash coming up here in maybe 30 or 40 seconds, so maybe that is the tool he needs to start getting involved. But the early dragon stacking here is going to be started, it looks like, for the side of Dorado Gaming. Able to pick this one up because 0 to 60 and uh, Bard did go for a little bit of a recall there, so while they're off the map, the dragon will be picked up. And so far, it's First Blood to Nameless Umbra. The dragon kind of is the response here from Dorado Gaming. They're more than happy to just keep on scaling up here with some of their cares. Yeah, it looks like we have Orion playing very aggressively. This is a two-level damage, so Septi yeah. can't not do anything here. And this is a dive setup, if you're asking me. Because we're I'm obviously going to be pathing up there sometime soon. Orion yeah. mm -hmm. going to be chunking down the Gnar. And I think it's a very important play for them to make the top side again because they need this Rift Herald, especially for the way that they're playing this game. Rift Herald is their goal, and it is required for them to snowball this game here. So look for both teams to be playing around that current update. Yeah, dives on this top side are really easy for them to pull off too, right? You've got the Rek'Sai ultimate, which can drop some aggro, the Camille ultimate as well, really, really good at handling some of those turret shots and juggling it back and forth. There is a nice control word here on the Umbra blue buff, so they are going to spot the Rek'Sai when she tries to path towards this top side, so Septi right now should realize, hey, there's a potential threat here. We've got hard only for Bard roaming up here as well, but with this Mega being very, very close to proccing, I think he's going to be pretty safe for the time being. But we'll have to see if there can be some nameless uh, aggression, aggression here on the top side. Yep. And, oh, we can see here that the support has wound up. Hard only for Bard is up here. And basically, because Dorado went for that dragon, they kind of locked themselves out of going for this Rift Trail play here. Oh, looks like they might be... Oh. Uh, what he plays here, Ryan getting again on Septi. Going for the ultimate. Hextech ultimatum has been issued. The taunt's still in the pit, though. Maybe a little bit of a miscommunication here from Umbra. They're getting collapsed on from four members of Dog. Nice sidestep on the charm. All thing forward is Dookie. Do they have what it takes to win this fight? Four versus four now as the taunt is going to join after picking up the Herald, but Orion is just going to be the sacrifice. They trade it back. The taunt going in. With that ultimate, Void Rush is going to pick that one up. A Bard trying to flash away, looking for some oh. safety. The Hook Swing coming through from 6 degree. They're looking to still skirmish this one out. The Taunt still in the middle, flashing forward. Gets the knock up onto Dookie, who has no mana. Come up and over the top. Is it going to be enough? Yes! But no revive coming through. 6 degree still maybe looking for this fight. 2 for 1, actually, sorry, 2 for 2 has been the trade so far and this is going to be six degree oh. going down looking for the ignite trying to turn it around but zillion will not fall so the fight comes up in the favor of dorado yeah and i think that uh, unfortunately for nameless umbra the case of the greed may have stricken them as they went for mm -hmm. two plays at the same time spread themselves out a little too thin because i think you either get that rift herald or you have everyone dive on deception and get the kill and yeah. then the rift herald's free yet again so unfortunately i think they thought they could go for both and just flew a little too close to the sun they sure did and they got burned that time now on the top side septi has the mega it's coming for the ultimate here that's going to be the stun coming through with the wallop orion 
looking a little worse for wear, but like you say, if the taunt is on the way, he's gonna look to join the fray. No flash on the Nar. Orion baits it perfectly, and the shutdown comes through. Umbra even up the scoreline. I have to say, looks like they are going for the Septi punish, and they get that yet again. So Orion getting be getting a jump start here, plus with the Rift Herald. I think they could have held it a tiny bit. They would have got a little more optimized yeah. plates, but look at this turret damage coming up for both of them here. Oh. I'd be able to get that, that is, whole thing. It is very, very close. Cheeky little recall that there. In like a minute. Yeah. That is quite a fast turret take. I, I think I am. Um, I underestimated the ability of Rexai to take this because that was extremely fast. Sure I think I'm interested was. to see the gold lead here, and it looks like Orion is getting quite close to a thousand k up on Septi. That would be a huge gold lead, and. Once uh, Ryan completes his item first, that's going to be an absolute massive power spike for the Cyanium Umbra. Yeah, it should be. Speaking of items coming through, we've got Prowler's Claw here for the Taunt on the Rek'Sai. It is, of course, the Kraken Slayer now for the Sivir. So Mythic Spikes coming in for Umbra early on here in this one. And with the Dragon spawning in 30 seconds, it could mean they want to look to fight for this objective. 0-60, to 60, face check in the bush. Can you get knocked up into the air with the Elastic Slingshot? Hybrid Carry taking some damage back here. Doesn't really have much support in the area. Digital Collapse coming through. That's going to be the on the hunt looking to get some damage done. Hybrid Carry on the run it will get taken out here or at least will go into the blobs. No, sorry. It's the Zillion Ultimate going for the revive first. Doki is here. We've got a 4v4 in the bot side. First one to fall is going to beat the Taun. Hybrid Carry still in the front line. Still has that passive available. We're going to get pop. And now they're going to find the Twitch. Creatine, you have stepped too far forward and he will go down. Resurrections coming through as the double kill here for oh, six no. degree is going to be enough. Tick, tick, tock. Orion goes down as well. Two for two. Septi, does he want to join the fray? No, has been spotted out. Dragon still available as chaos ensues. Yeah, the Taunt's going to be up here yet again, so I think actually this is going to be going into the favor of Nameless Umbra. This fight keeps going. Six They're degrees gets a kill right in the face of Dookie. Unfortunately, it has no mana. Wasn't able to contribute there. But the Taunt is here doing his best. He really is doing his best, but he is just a little mini Yordle, and he is now a dead mini Yordle. Dragon now still on the map. No team able to claim it just yet, but the Taun is going to turn his attention towards that objective. You have to think they'd be able to grab this, but Creatine potentially on the Prowl. No, not going to risk his life for any sort of cheeky attempt there on the Dragon. So it is going to be the Infernal picked up. And uh, a lot of scoundrels actually getting take out there, taken out there in that fight. I think Six Degree doing a nice job on this auction, optimizing that passive. Yeah, I think he did an excellent job picking up the kills we could. Freezing going for the 1v1. Zero to 60, has to be careful. He's gonna flash away, spell shielding the oh. E, but no, Creatine patiently waits it out and is able to pick it up. Actually now two, one and two on this Twitch. Blade of the Ruin King in inventory already. This Twitch is feeling pretty strong through the, the game so far. Yeah, uh, as we were talking, uh, Twitch was not getting punished in the lane at all for that weak lane phase. And now, after being able to participate in a couple fights, pick up some kills, is doing a great job for the side of Dorado. So, looks like we have ourselves a Twitch coming online. Absolutely true. Top side though, Orion still putting the pain down in this Nar Camille matchup. Does have to be careful. Has a couple uh, enemies waiting in the wings here. Hybrid carry. Just looking to protect Septi for the time being, allow him to pick up this wave and do what he can. But still, quite an even game here, Krim's only about a 1500 gold lead here for Nameless. And I think if, if you're them in this game as against this Twitch, against this team fighting composition, you'd like to push the envelope here just a little bit further. Get a few more early game kills, knock down a few more of these outer towers, and really start to open up the map for yourselves. Yeah, I think that they really need to have an open map to utilize their flanking potential. Ryan. We have Ryan going for another play here. Yeah, Septi really can't do anything in this lane anymore. Once Camille has the lead, it's pretty much just going to be a punching bag the whole rest of the game, unless some massive outplay happens. And looks like they're utilizing it to get top, lit, top side control as we have wards going down into the jungle of Dorado Gaming there. And yeah, we're just going to give them another Rift Herald as well. So. Looks like Nameless are utilizing their advantages in the top side here. 
That being said, they do have to eventually utilize their advantage against creatine. Killing that Twitch uh, it, through the mid game and the late game is going to get harder and harder as he's going to have just, you know, so many tools with the Zillion protecting him, the exhaust there as well. Actually opted for the Ghost, which is curious. 60, once again, face checking a bush here, is going to have to be a little bit careful. Bombs are going to go wide. Ultimate coming down as the bounce goes off. Hybrid carry able to pick up that kill for the team. Faton in a bit of trouble here as well, running away from this Ari. This is an odd numbered fight in the favor of Dorado Gaming. They're flashing in, they want to look for this one. That's gonna be the slingshot, or rather the stretching strikes, picking them up, double kill for the Twitch, presses E2 for one. Picking that one up, the Taunt now still in trouble under this tower. Oh. Actually, a nice ultimate. They're gonna to look to turn this one around, but the Resurrect is gonna come through to pick up the kill. Orion stands alone under the tower. Hybrid carry, barely a surviving, hooked on Flays. 200 HP as well, that was close for a moment. But Dorado Gaming gonna walk away with a win. Yeah, a huge misplay there from zero to 60. Unfortunately, didn't realize that the bottom side of the jungle has been completely taken over. And it's just one of those things where you have to do deductive reasoning on the spot, which is a lot harder to do in the game than it is outside of the game. But when you take that top side of the jungle, you have to wonder what the enemy team's doing in the meantime, and that was securing your bot side jungle. And you just face check right into that unknowingly. So unfortunately there, and this spells huge boons for the side of the lobby. Gaming Twitch gets more kills. They actually won the team fight, and they have basically evened out the gold yet again. And the kills are going into good places for them. And Dorado Gaming gotta be happy with that one. Absolutely true. You talked about a little bit in Champ Select about how the Twitch is really the majority of their damage in this composition, right? Sure, the Zillion can lend a little bit with the double bombs and things like that. The Ari has the Everfrost is going to provide some utility and some damage. But so far, it's the Twitch with four kills. He's almost building up towards his two item spike. And you have to wonder, unless Nameless can find a way consistently onto this Twitch to get on top of Creatine and take him out, how are they going to deal with this composition from uh, Dorado Gaming. We've got a dragon spawn in here in about 30 seconds. It is going to be an ocean soul here in this game one. And it feels a little bit like this one's slipping away from Nameless Umbra. We talked about how they needed to be the ones to snowball the early game. As of right now, they have uh, only a 400 gold advantage at 18 minutes. That is not good enough. Yeah, that is going to be quite rough for the team fight setup. That being said, Orion is massive. And even though the CS is about even, the, the strength is certainly not as they are going for this dive. Baton hit the RT, maybe a little bit early there as the TP is going to come through here from Dookie. Nice charm going to land. Baton with the Blast Cone, trying to provide some space for himself. Meanwhile, though, Dorado are going to be on the Dragon, but let's watch this top lane fight. Orion gets the hook shot over the wall. Sefti on the chase here. Boomerang finds its mark, but it's not going to be enough. Six degrees standing tall, providing space for the rest of his team. Now going to clasp onto that wall, spin himself away. Unfortunately, though, on the bot side, it's Sivir going down. It's the dragon claimed as well for Dorado. They dissuade the top lane, dive with that teleport, and they win on the opposite side of the map. Ooh, winning two plays on the opposite side of the map. Never a good sign for the other team. However, getting all green lights from the side Dorado Gaming. Fortunately, I don't think they were keeping that TP from Ari in mind as they went for that top lane. And then 0 to 60, I, I got a question going for that ward when you know the enemy team should be doing dragon right there. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the third or fourth time 0 to 60 has kind of lost track of a few enemy members and it's cost him his life, so. 0-4 on the Sivir does, of course, have some scaling prowess. You know, we talked about how this new Sivir update does provide a lot of kind of some late game scaling with the crit scaling, with the auto attack speed steroids that she does have and the tools at her disposal. So we'll have to see if maybe those uh, bouncing blades are going to do some stuff in the team fights. But mid lane, it looks like Nameless, they're getting a little bit too greedy here again. Going to allow a pick off to come through and they don't even claim the mid lane outer. Is a bit unfortunate. I thought they could get with the Rift Herald, and it just wasn't enough. No oh, pause coming through, unfortunately. Looks like someone has to go answer the door. You know, not in a professional setting. We do have players in houses, as normal people do. Gotta deal with normal house things. Yes, indeed. Go answer the door real quick. Grab your door dash, bring it back, you know, get ready for the rest of the game. And so let, let's take stock here. This gives us a good opportunity to kind of 
take a look at how the game has been going so far. Eight kills to 14, gold lead now in the favor of Dorado. Six kills on this Twitch, and they are starting to look like they are looking very, very comfortable in this one. Obviously, you mentioned the Gnar and how he's struggling a little bit in this side lane matchup. Needs maybe a, a, a tank item or two to, to start lending it to, towards him, you know, making a bit more of a difference, feeling a little bit more safe. But otherwise, for Nameless Umbra, moving forward maybe for the next five or so minutes... What do you want to see them do? Would you like to see them splitting the map? Maybe looking for a 1-3-1 one, one setup, try to catch out the, the Twitch or, or the Zillion in some rotations? Or, or what do you think the game plan should be here for them? Yeah, I think they're definitely going to want to be avoiding straight 5v5 teamfight setups, especially teamfight setup by Dorado Gaming. That's going to be where they're strongest. And it's just, you know, in terms of their champions, the teamfight diff is just way too big. Yeah. If we, including the solo lanes, right? So we have the Gnar, and then including jungle fight, Zach Ari, way more useful in a team fight than the, the the opposite side for Umbra here. That being said, their solo lanes on a one v one point of view are way stronger. It's an interesting scenario you don't see too often here, but their solo lanes are actually still very strong comparatively to the other team. It's just as a group together combined they are not as strong so splitting the map maybe even going for some crazy one three one get get your solo laners versus the enemy opponents in a 1v1 duel and just take them down it's just easier said than done but i think that yep. is their strength currently in on this game state one issue i kind of see with that well two issues really and their names are zach and twitch Zack has, you know, that long range elastic slingshot can kind of change the tides of battle very quickly if there's a close fight going on in a side lane. And the Twitch with this invisibility, if you don't see him on the map, you have to assume that he's wherever you are. You have to assume that if you go for a 1v1, there's a Twitch there ready to just shred through your HP bar. So they definitely do want to split that map, find those advantages where they can take advantage of those 1v1s like you're talking about. But they have to be careful about when they're doing it. They have to have good vision control. They have to have eyes on the Twitch. They have to make sure that there's not going to be an answer coming through from the other side. Because we saw them attempt it just a few minutes ago in that top lane. And the TP came through. They were able to kind of shut the door there on the side of Dorado and make sure that, you know, Nameless aren't able to play towards these win conditions that they really want to be going for. Yeah, I think it might have been a bit of a hasty setup and not counting for the TP because I think it certainly is possible for their top side 3v3 to beat uh, the side of Dorado Gaming. Mm -hmm. But they have to really make sure that that is a play that is not involving Twitch or this Zillion, which is, again, it's going to be, with that invisibility, it's pretty tough. And another factor is when these objectives come up, it's just a magnet for 5v5 team fights. Yeah. So you have to really nail the timing in between the objectives to get those individual isolated kills. It's it's a it's a reason why a lot of the times people just opt for the team fighting mm -hmm. uh, comps because it's just so much easier to pull off. Yeah. But you know, if you're better at that one three one style, it is the counter to team fights. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, absolutely it is. It's just, like you say, it's it's the, the tougher strategy to execute. So if, if uh, Umbra can kind of put that on display here, show that they have a good handle uh, of how they want to play the map and how they want to play the split pressure, then it, it's impressive to watch. It's fun to watch. And, and it's obviously the way that they can move forward in this game. But for Dorado, yeah. I mean, the game plan is simple for them. They've got a Twitch with six kills. They've got an Ari with an Everfrost. They've got a Tanky Zack. And they've got a Zillion for a revive. So they all group up in a ball. They play out for these objectives and they force Nameless Umbra to come to them. If Nameless Umbra doesn't come to them, then guess what? They just kind of slowly win the game. They're happy just scaling up, getting objectives, picking them up here, there, and everywhere. And eventually, the Switch is going to have six items. He's going to have a Zillion revive. He's going to have all sorts of protection from the Zac and even the Ari kind of trying to provide some peels. And so it kind of feels like this game is on a clock, right? For the side of Umbra. They don't really have a, a late game... Uh, edge at all like maybe the Sivir has some crits maybe she gets an insane boomerang blade off and can kind of shred through uh, a couple members but even then so much has to go right for them in those 5v5 scenarios for them to even have a chance yes I think that for Umber to have a chance I always talk about this it's the flank angles these 5v5 teams these team comps you really have to have a setup where it's front line front to back team fights where they really shine you got to get through their tanky front line to get to that juicy back line. 
And that being said, they do have dive potential here with Orion on the Camille. As we uh, get a little double pause, go ahead and ignore that. As we have the, as we have plenty of diving capable members. So Camille is almost pretty much a guaranteed engage on Twitch, which means that there is hope. There is an opportunity. If Dorado doesn't set up their team fights properly, maybe they have a lack of vision somewhere they leave an opening. Mm -hmm. Or they just hastily go for objective without a good setup and their Twitch gets blown up. Well, now there's not that much damage on their team and they certainly can be beaten after the Twitch is dead. But, Absolutely. you know, it's, it's it's this is 80 carry warping gameplay here. It's all on what Korea yeah. team does. <laughs> can you protect the quit Twitch? Can you kill the Twitch? I mean, we'll, we'll find out here shortly. Hopefully we can get back to the action here in a moment. Looks like a couple players kind of taking the opportunity to uh, grab a bathroom break while they're waiting. And uh, hopefully they'll be right back and ready to rejoin the action. We're just about to crest the 20 minute mark here. Dragon spawning in three and a half minutes. Ocean Soul would be terrifying, I think, on both sides, but specifically, if you're Nameless Umbra, you do not want that Ocean Soul to get over uh, onto the Dorado Gaming Squad. That just makes it so much harder for you to get on top of the Twitch and then kill him with some of the sustain and the heals coming through with that one. So we'll see. I I'm not sure they're going to have the what it takes to fight for this next dragon, uh, but surely we'll have to try and make something happen before that soul is going to be on the map. Yeah. Do you want an unkillable frontline? Because that's how you get him. It is the ocean soul i mean it really depends on the game state you know it's so interesting now that we've you know we're into almost 10 years or maybe even more of league of legends here mm -hmm. to we've advanced to the point where it's not so much what comps it's comps and game state so we've we've complicated the game we've made we've made this game more complicated as time has gone on but i mean just looking at the wars this is it's seeming like full control for Dorado gaming yeah, did just have that vision set up on the bot side to grab up the dragon. Now this maybe even, baron? yeah, threatening a baron here as it just spawns. It is. If the uh, taunt is down, but there is no smite here. Yeah, as we kind of reorient ourselves for a moment, the taunt is dead. Yeah, this could potentially be an opportunity. Elastic slingshot onto hard only for bard. They're gonna uh, get baited here a little bit by the pause as we kind of catch our clients up to live. Hopefully, uh, we're still synced up with the cast here. Bard has to flash away. Maybe has dissuaded the Baron attempt at least for a moment. I don't See think they really Umbra. have anyone who can face check. There's a lot of squishy members, and Harper Bar just flashed, and they might be walking right into a choke point. Ryan is trying to step forward here, trying to provide some vision for the team, seeing what he can do. Hooked on plays, is going to find some damage here onto Hard Only Kvar, who CC'd, knocked up in the air, going to get taken out. Exhaust goes down, but it's on to the wrong target. Dookie going to go golden, going to buy a couple moments, and Umbra there, just all going to start to fall. Orion on the run, Baton and six degree will surely fall, and you are absolutely right there, Krims. They get baited into the choke point, Dorado hits the go buttons, and Umbra goes boom. Yeah, that is the problem with the team comp from Nameless Umbra. As you can see, very difficult to even get to Dragon, let alone face check it. And once you lose control of the, of the game, it's, it's really hard to get back into it. And credit to Dorado for realizing the game state right there. Point Man Baron is, is sometimes very sketchy to sometimes really good, and they made their correct call right there. Absolutely did. Evaluated the situation correctly. They had, you know, seven or eight minutes to kind of think about that call, I guess. So, yeah, I know, guess so. Huh? They gave them some time <laughs> to meditate on it, you know, think about what they wanted to do, calculate their damage numbers, you know, you know, get get everything going. But yeah, ultimately able to capitalize on that one. Great, greatly played uh, on the macro sense from them and hitting the go button when they needed to, able to turn that fight around. Really like what I'm seeing from Dorado and as this lead for them starts to crest the 5,000 gold mark, things are getting more and more difficult for Umbra on the other side. Yeah, you were uh, talking about a timer earlier, Lindor. I think the time is now because yeah. uh, <laughs> it has flipped solidly into the side of Dorado. Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's just... Surprise! Dead. Yeah, those 1v1s are very strong from Twitch here. Ari has a lot of dashes. Should be able to get out. Valiant attempt, but they're going to be getting collapsed on soon. This is just uh, this is just a broken game state for the side of Nameless Umbra. Oh no! All on the Twitch pops out once again. Knockups coming through. This is a lot of um, 
Peel coming out from hard only for Bard, but the poison ticking it. away. He doesn't oh, live. The last tick of poison is going to take out the Bard. The Taunt on the run here. Be able to tunnel his way out of there, but this is going to be a very powerful push coming out from the side of Dorado. They've got Nar still on the top side. Four members strong on the bot lane. Remember, they do have this Baron buff. They should be able to gain a lot here. Nameless Number has to be careful. Engage coming through. Orion just able to sidestep the uh, slingshot coming down. Yeah, I mean, when Sivir goes down, normally you think of a major mid lane player as the wave clear component of a team, but mm -hmm. on this team, it is the bot lane in Sivir. And as soon as Sivir dies, these turrets are going to melt, especially with a Baron Bot. That'll accelerate this gold lead to just about 10k. Septi, though, may have overstayed his welcome. Orion has 6 degree in his back pocket, and they are finally able to claim another. But this dragon now on the map should be an easy pickup now for the side of Dorado. Gonna be able to invest four members into the bot side of the map, pick that one up. Sure, there, Nar died, but he got the tower. He's happy. His life was well spent. Wait a second here. Do Umbra want to fight this? Well, it would be a 4v5. Hail Mary is in order here. On over the wall, looking for the seal, not gonna find it. Smite comes through from Hybrid Carry, and now Baton getting absolutely shredded by Creatine, who has to be careful, actually. Hooked on plays on the other side, has to use his ultimate on himself. Perhaps this is an opening for Umbra. Flashing over the wall, hooked on plays will be alright. Come up and it's not gonna find too much. Dragon goes over. Umbra, they, they saw an opportunity there, maybe for a moment, but not quite able to make it happen. Yeah, I, I think they maybe should have prioritized their fight over the dragon steal. Right. Because like even if you get that, like you don't really win much. Maybe you delay, but if you win the team fight, well, then maybe you get some turrets and there's an opportunity for you to get back into the game with momentum. So I think they should have prioritized the fight over the steal. Might have been a better look for them. Yeah, I mean with how Hooked on Flays was kind of separated from the rest of the team, had to flash, had to alt himself. There could have been a potential way in for them to find a way onto this Twitch. Try to take Creatine out of the fight. Didn't have his Get of the Jail free card there with him. But unfortunately, the gap close wasn't quite enough. Weren't able to find the right targets there. Ooh, Bard had to be careful there for a moment. Charm goes wide, and it kind of just looks like Dorado Gaming are happy to just sit and wait for Nameless to make a mistake, and that's when they're going to try and capitalize. Looks like Orion here has built him hard. Interesting. That is question uh, thick. Gage coming through. Bard and Paton just trying to find some vision in their own jungle, but unfortunately, this jungle does not belong to them anymore. Six degree gets pulled on in, and they aren't done. Hybrid carry over the top, looking for Orion. Hook shot over the wall will get him to safety, but three in the death chamber here as Dorado look to continue pushing this advantage. Charm's gonna land, knockup comes through, Orion doing what he can, but again has to hookshot defensively, has to try and keep himself safe. Zero to 60 enjoyer, even with two items, barely <laughs> even tickling this Zac at the moment, and it is four versus two on the map for the time being. Ooh. Wait yeah, here. it feels bad whenever you auto attack someone as an A carry and it's sub 100 damage. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I crit and it did 200, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Even with that uh, Kraken Slayer and the true damage still is not enough, so that's just going to show how far ahead Side Dorado Gaming is. And 700 gold bounty on Creatine here. Only one death in the game. Doing very excellent. I mean, his team played around him very well, and they're just utilizing the strong Twitch now. They absolutely are. 10, 1, and 9. Three items on this Twitch. Even Dookie actually building up. This Magi Soul Stealer has 12 stacks on that one. Purely as well on assists. Already. <laughs> Purely on assists. Yeah, 1, 1, and 12. This is the utility Ari. Uh, if I've ever seen one. Everfrost, of course, provides a little bit of extra CC and can be chained with that charm. And Nameless Umbra, yeah, they're trying to kind of defend their half of the map here, but in terms of proactive plays to be made, their options are very, very limited. I would really like to see Orion just really just try to pull Septi as much as possible. Because that's one thing that you can have that's almost guaranteed in this map state. And if Orion gets the kill or forces Septi to back in TP, that is something that you can play around. 
Tefty has the TP of his own available, so both top laners are ready to join if uh, there's any sort of shenanigans around this Baron. And yep, Dorado has control here, so this is purely in their favor. And, I mean, they can just rinse and repeat, start the Baron, yeah. and then Elmus has to just, just face check, and then we know how that went last time. Yeah, I think they have to just give it here, unfortunately, for Umbra. Hybrid carry able to tank this one up very effectively. Creatine, obviously, doing a lot of damage to the purple worm. They're going to be able to claim this one very easily. And for Nameless Umbra, they need to get on this bot side of the map. Maybe start setting up some vision around the dragon, because they have the opportunity right now to be the first to an objective. Maybe if they can find a way, if they can get a member of Dorado to face check them, maybe then... There's a way for them to win a fight, but for the time being, they're going to trade the tower for the Baron. They're going to try and set up a little bit of vision control around this dragon, which is spawning in 30 seconds. And this is Ocean Soul, if Dorado Gaming can pick it up. I, you know, they have the vision down, but they're not really using it for yeah. a face check punish. I mean, maybe that wouldn't go so well for them, but running... See, now it's just getting cleared out, and running in... Now they're just in the same situation as they were before. I think maybe they had a slight opportunity, and now it's just gone to another face check objective and probably die to Twitch situation. Yeah, there's no flank wards, there's no possibility for them to get onto this back line unless they can find a miracle. Dookie and uh, Hyper the Fury here standing for Yathaton over the wall. No, not going to be able to claim it. Now he is in a world of hurt. Stunned up, has the stopwatch for a moment, but that's just going to make him die two seconds later. Sivir is pushing in the mid lane. They are able to grab an objective bounty with that one, but the teleport in to respond means they're not going to be any sort of inhibitor tower threat. And yeah, on the run now is going to be 0 to 60. Ooh. 6 degree. Thought he was in a 1v1, but now with some members joining... It is definitely not a 1v1. Four members of Dorado in the area. They have their ocean soul, and they are going to continue looking to push Umbra off this map. Yeah, down there getting oh, Ryan going in. He's a bit cheeky. Yeah, not exactly sure about that one. He's getting chased down now. Septi looking for the slows, looking for the hyper procs. Nice bit of a hook shot juke Camille there. Camille mobility prevails yet again. <laughs> sure does. Um, but I'm not sure it's going to prevail for very long because we now have Baron up minions pushing into Umbra's base. All right, Orion flank TP team fight. Let's go. All right, that's the game plan. Crims wants to see it. Orion is just going to walk his way into Which doesn't the have flash. Though. It wouldn't be that bad. They, don't, they have boards behind. I don't know. Maybe they don't want to pull the trigger, but I don't think the game state's going to get any better, guys. Yeah, it's, it's starting to slip further and further out of their grasp. It's an 8k gold lead for the side of Dorado. They, of course, are Baron buffed up. And now Orion actually might get caught out himself. Wallop for the stun. Dodges the Orb of Deception, but now Hybrid Carry over the top. Looking to re-engage himself. Not quite going to get it, but now the tower will be the focus. Going to try and knock this one down. Septi in the front lines. Not going to be able to do it just yet. Might take one more wave. Orion, now, is this the opportunity? There is still this flank ward in the mid lane. There's also some on the top side. Could be a potential option. Again, not willing to go for it just yet. That quick flash was actually very big. And I think that could have been possible angle. That being said, you know, it was one of those difficult situations to call for, but there's not that many good calls left for the side of Nameless here, but they are stalling out the game. But, you know, you would have thought this game might have been over at 25, but here we are, six minutes later, at 31 minutes. But yeah, we're at this uh, beefy frontline stage with the ocean break. Yeah. Sonya Zack, by the way. Uh, just going full out aggression with that one. Obviously, the armor helps, and the Zonia's for a little bit of extra safety there, can immune some skills. Yeah, I mean, three and a half uh, HP on this Zack. Even has some damage, right? With the Zonias, he is feeling very, very confident in this one. Keeping track of the uh, number of pages in this book for the Ari as well. We're now up to 16, writing quite the novel. And yeah, tank items coming in here for the Nar as well with the Thorn Mail and of course the plated steel caps. Things are looking good for this squad. Still haven't seen the fourth item completed just yet for Creatine, but he is working towards it now. 
and we need to see that miracle play. Where are Umbra going to make their last stand here? Is this going to be it? Orion caught out, going to get charmed up. Everfrost for the stun. Hyper Terry going to flash into left bounce and creatine. He's firing away. Brom Ultimate is going to provide some space for the team. The exhaust as well is crucial. But Umbra just get chased off completely. Creatine hits the R key. And even through exhaust, bursts them basically all down to half HP. Yeah, I don't even think that was like a uh, half a second of creatine bullet fire. And they are already half HP. Yeah. So we just need a, we just need a fraction of a second more to get those kills there. Very dangerous. Back one, 80 carry on the field right now. Turn in mid lane, last stand here. As this might be the team fight of the game. Okay, to decide when they're gonna fight for their lives. It's gonna be here, Sefty going forward, whiffs the ultimate. That's one cooldown down for the side of Dorado Gaming. Uh, Ryan now going forward. They've managed to protect the inhibitor for the time being, trying to push them off here. Still some pretty good health Dorado bars. playing surprisingly scared here. Taking their time to whittle this one away. Are going to be able to claim it now? Zach with the defensive slingshot. Ooh, is this bomb going to kill Orion? Tick, tick, tock. Oh, the shield Ooh. from Braum. Locket of the Iron Solari saves his top laner's life. But the inhibitor did still fall. And yeah, you're absolutely right, Crims. It seems like Dorado are kind of making sure that they can, can finish this game out. Definitely taking their time, making sure not to take any sort of extra risks. But I feel like they could just kind of step forward and smack Umbra around. Instead, though, they're going to check off all their boxes, going to grab their third Baron of the game, and maybe that will be what needs to push them over the edge. Yeah, I think they had much more meaningful of a lead maybe about six minutes ago compared to now. I mean, they're very confident taking these Barons and objectives forever, but yeah, they certainly could have won the game multiple times. And I'm just thinking to the next game, Dora. Like, if you know this team seems a little bit overly cautious and afraid to close out games, it might signal to you next game that they don't have what it takes to, to take a game by the way. Right. Yeah, maybe index more in to that scaling, into that team fighting uh, for Nameless Umbra moving forward in this series. Try to match them toe for toe uh, instead of kind of looking for that early game snowball. It could be a potential move, obviously, if they do end up losing this game, which is looking like that's what's going to happen here. Their backs will be up against the wall, their playoff lives potentially at stake. Uh, if they don't win this game, they are still, of course, uh, able to get a playoff berth. Oh, say, excuse me, Orion here going to get engaged on. Striking Strikes not quite going to be able to yoink him back oh, in. Zillion speed ups. That is one fast Zach trying to chase him down Orion. As the hookshot will be able to get to safety. But now the issue becomes this Elder Dragon, which is now on the map. See if Umbra can try and find a foothold here in the jungle. It doesn't belong to them at all. And Hybrid carry fearlessly. Trying to zone them off here. Septi with the flank. He's about to turn mini, though. We don't see Orion here just yet. He does have Alt for Dog over the wall. Hybrid carry into the backside. Creatine's gonna find the first one as it is the Braum that dies. The Taunt on the side looking very worse for wear. Let's keep your eyes on Creatine. He's gonna look for this one. He's gonna look for the 1v1 against the sixth degree. He's gonna find it over the wall. They're gonna clean them all up. Orion buys a second. The resurrection here from Katan does as well, but that is going to do it here in game one. No Elder Dragon needed. Dorado Gaming going to walk away with the victory. They were really going to go for it, but we're given an opportunity here. Katan to do his best last stand. Stands, no chance. Get back to the Last turret's going down. Dorado Gaming picking up the first win here at 36 minutes. Although, honest, that's more of a criticism. True. <laughs> <laughs>Before I said, Crims, perhaps there's a glimmer of hope for the side of Umbra. Perhaps there's a crack in the armor for Dorado Gaming and a game plan moving forward here for Nameless Umbra. Yeah, I think that it, it it just was such an advantage. You have to wonder where why it was such safe gameplay. That being said, I have thrown a game before. I know how it feels. So <laughs> <laughs> there is a little bit of empathy in that comment. But I think with that, I that is game number one it was pretty explosive in the early stages and mm -hmm. then got to cool off for the rest couple uh, 
a couple last minutes of that game there. Yeah, it was kind of a slow bleed out uh, from the side of Umbra with their all AD composition, not able to find a foothold, not able to snowball the early game, and ultimately not able to uh, bring their game plan to fruition. So they are going to be saddled with the loss in game one here. We're going to take a short break before we do jump into game two. We'll see if Dorado Gaming can grab the 2-0 sweep and lock their playoffs in, or if Umbra are going to find a fighting chance here. We'll be right back.
clouds move closer. Welcome back, everybody, to the Nameless stream here. We've got Dorado Gaming versus Nameless Umbra. Unfortunately for Nameless, they are down 1-0 to zero or 0-1, zero to one, depending on how you look at it here, heading into game 2. So Dorado Gaming looking for that 2-0 sweep here. Crims, what sort of adaptations would you like to see uh, from Nameless heading into this game 2? Yeah, I think for Nameless, they seem to understand how to play towards topside. Unfortunately for them, they the way that they drafted it was kind of more of a bot focused comp, right? In that their strong point was bottom, and there's a bit of there's a bit of a what is it uh, debate on how you play League of Legends. But in my view, you want to play towards your stronger side. So Camille was scaling, but they did pick good moments to gank for Camille. So they picked when Camille could get the kill, and they did execute that on that properly. But unfortunately. They didn't really make any good plays on the bottom side, which let Twitch just get completely out of hand. And then the biggest problem is when you went for that Rift Herald fight. I mean, let's that's just the whole the whole game changes on that fight around Rift Herald. If that goes into Nameless Umbra's favor, I think we would have a completely different game. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, uh, if you can see, you know, Camille getting a couple kills there, even if the Tawn can kind of grab a couple, so the Rex size a little bit more strong. Those divers then become so much more of a threat for the Twitch, right? So definitely think that's maybe the um, crux of that game one, where things really started to fall apart for Nameless. But I do want to give Dorado a little bit of props for their scouting headed into this match. I think with uh, how they drafted that game, they expected Nameless to play for the top side of the map, and with kind of their weaker laning bot side, they realized, hey, we can pick something that can scale. They're not going to punish us as hard as maybe some other teams might be able to, and ultimately, that plan worked out beautifully for them in that game. The Twitch absolutely shredded through uh, a lot of the Nameless health bars, and I think that they really knew what to expect from Nameless Umbra and were able to uh, plan accordingly. So Nameless definitely need to uh, switch things up here a little bit. We talked a little bit uh, at the end of that last game about how maybe they want to pick more for scaling, more for team fighting, and put a little bit less pressure on them through the early stages uh, to have to snowball and get some early advantages. Um, you know, something that I kind of just noticed throughout game one, and also partly the reason why Dorado Gaming took so long to close that game out is if you just wind back the clocks in your mind, thinking about all the team fights and everything, they never really started a team fight. They pretty much always let Nameless hmm. run into them. Right. So even though they had the engage factor with the Zack, they really didn't utilize it and were more of a counterpunch kind of team. So they were more about baiting in the fights rather than mm -hmm. engaging them themselves, which means that this is somewhat of a weakness you could pinpoint and target so if you build a comp right. that requires dorado gaming to engage i don't know how well they would do in that game perhaps we have to find out here for game two it looks like the teams have swapped sides it's uh, dorado gaming epsilon on the blue side nameless umbra on the red side and still only the one first ban uh, for Dorado here. So I think that maybe affects them a little bit less given that they are on the blue side for this game. Um, but obviously still it isn't going to be ideal for them. Definitely going to have a couple picks that maybe they'd like to take off the table that are going to be let through. And so for Nameless, they kind of get to play this mind game. Do they ban away some of these... Uh, you know, top tier meta picks, or do they leave them up knowing that Dorado can't ban them themselves? And then on, you know, red one and two, they can kind of pick away a couple of those powers picks. Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, do they ban the Twitch? Hmm, maybe, mm. maybe not. <laughs> they, it was a team cough built for Twitch there, so there is debate on whether you ban that, or maybe just ban the Zillion. That mm -hmm. being said, they have a lot of options. I think with this, with this uh, imbalance of the bans here, you could really pick a winning lane, and I don't think... It's unfortunate because of the bans, but I don't, it's, sometimes it's really hard for the enemy team to do something when you have one ban compared to their three. Yeah, it definitely limits your options there a little bit. It looks like we are just waiting for a couple ready checks here getting into this game, but 
I'm, I'm just so curious whether Nameless are going to kind of show us that different style, whether they can show us that, hey, yeah, listen, we, we prefer to play through topside. We like to pick carries for Orion. We like to have kind of some skirmishing early potential with our jungle, our mid, and our top lane. But we can play for bot lane too. We can camp into the bot side. We can play something like maybe the Nautilus or, or things that can kind of receive some ganks a little bit better. And I'd like to see them try that strategy here. You know, what, what do they have to lose against a Dorado gaming squad here? If, if they play for the top side again, I think we might see a lot of the same as what we saw in game number one. And so, you know, I, I, we'll see if they're confident and if they're comfortable kind of flexing their strategy around a little bit, or if maybe they just feel like, hey, there were a few um, execution mistakes in, in that game number one. If we can shore those up, if we can, you know, have that level two gank net us the first blood and, and change things around that way, maybe that will be the difference maker Crims uh, seems to be having some mic issues here for a moment, so we'll wait for him to uh, get those figured out. But um, yeah, headed into this game number two, obviously a lot on the line. Nameless looking to punch their ticket into those uh, top two spots, those automatic playoff berths. And Dorado Gaming, they currently do occupy that number two spot in the standings. They are sitting uh, with a 3-0 game record, sorry, match record. Uh, have only lost two games and on their way to that 3-0 and undefeated record. And so, yeah, we'll see if they can keep maintaining that here or if Nameless Rum Umbra can maybe throw a wrench in their plans. Crims, are you back? Yeah, uh, my computer Welcome. decided to throw a wrench in my ability to communicate, <laughs> but I am back. <laughs> Good to hear. All right. <laughs> we'll see All what right. uh, Dorado want with their first and only ban. Looks like it'll be the Vagar. Okay. Yeah, Vagar actually, you know, underrated pick. Especially into Ari if they want to keep doing that. Vagar does very well into highly mobile champions, keeping mm -hmm. them locked in his cage, and then makes them a really easy target to finish off here. Kind of like Camille. Vagar is kind of like Camille in that respect. Vilia being taken off here, jungle target. I think what is going to be more important here is the first pick. I mean, there's just so many options. And with not as many bans, there is more potential mm. for an overpowered first pick. Definitely is. Uh, same bans here for Nameless, sticking with what uh, they had prepared there for game one. And we'll see what Dorado want to get. Yeah, I was going to say Senna is left up. That's what they banned with their one ban in game number one. So their read clearly is that Senna is uh, kind of the premier first pick on blue side. <clears throat> yeah, looking through here, I actually don't see much Senna play in Creatine's champ history. Right. That being said, I'm sure he is going to be an excellent uh, Senna player. Or maybe we, uh, they put it on support. That's not something you typically see. Usually you see the AD carry on support. But it looks like it's probably going to be hooked on Filets playing the Senna. Yeah, he does have some Senna games. Experience. Yeah. So it's going to be one of those weird situations where the AD carry is going to be playing something not Senna. Hmm. Yeah, obviously you can kind of make it the Senna support and just play a conventional marksman, or maybe they do want to go for kind of one of those Senna lanes. You know, the Tom Kench, uh, the Wukong that we've kind of seen in the past, one of those kind of niche picks that you can see with the fasting Senna. And we'll have to find out what they want to go for. So far, though, for Nameless, it's Vayne, Diana, and I'm seeing some team fighting already here. <laughs> team fight and scale factor with the Vayne and Diana here. That being said, Vayne is punchable, and Senna is certainly a champion who can deal a lot of poke damage. Mm -hmm. However, Vayne is unmatched in the 1v1 against any other AD carry, so we'll see if they can either abuse that short range or this Vayne is going to be absolutely busted. Yeah, Vayne looking pretty strong in the current meta right now. I'm just going to take a look here. 0 to 60 Enjoyer. How much Vayne do you play? Okay, fair amount. Has a pretty decent win rate with it in uh, solo queue. So definitely going to be feeling confident with that one. Dorado looking to round out some team fighting here for themselves. Victor locked in. Obviously a scaling control mage there in the mid lane. And Kindred was the hover. We might get a Gragas here instead. Could be a potential flex pick between mid and... or Sorry, excuse me. Uh, top and jungle here for Dorado. Yeah, Kindreds would certainly do well into Diana in teamfight scenarios. Yep. Uh, question is, though, Nameless could kind of pull a cheeky move and pivot out of direct engage teamfights, and then Kindred looks a bit silly. Right. Like you said, Gragas, 
being picked up here you know, typically was in the jungle for many years, but is primarily a top laner for the past two. So we are assuming that is a Gragas top lane. So Dorado really picking the safe blind picks top side here as we have a Cassadin in the mid versus Ooh. Victor. Wow, yeah, this is some turbo scaling from Nameless. They've kind of picked up, it looks like, <laughs> on what you did, Crim's last game, right? Dorado, I wouldn't say they struggled to close that game out, but they weren't exactly doing it at, in record pace, right? It took them a little while once they got yeah. their lead uh, to figure out exactly how they wanted to close the game, to grab those few extra fights, to grab their third Baron, to grab their Ocean Soul, you mm. know, check all their boxes, and then eventually uh, did get their victory here. It's going to be a lot more pressure on them to maybe try and uh, accelerate the pace a little bit more than they did in the last one yeah. as we head into the second. I do have a question, second. though, Lindart. Yeah, go Does for it. Does it really count as struggling if you even try to close the game? Because it didn't look like they were trying to close the game at all. Okay, <laughs> that's a fair like they point. <laughs> <laughs> they, Yeah, okay. They were just happy to just sit there and not end the game. Uh, this game, they'll have to show us a little bit different, right? If you just sit back <laughs> against a Cassidy and Vayne, guess what? 35 minute rolls around and you're in some trouble. So definitely we'll have to see them kind of push the, push the envelope a little bit more in this game too. Uh, some support bands coming through. Aatrox hitting the band table as well. Seraphine, I think, is a very, very smart band. That Seraphine Centeline can be very, very scary. Yeah, the Aatrox pickup or band does this throw me in a bit of a loop here. So Ooh. maybe they are keened into something that I am not for the side nameless here. But I'm very confident that is a topside Gragas. Interesting if it if they are playing some kind of flex on my mind right now. Mm hmm. Let's crank taken out. Certainly is pretty strong. Is a you know kill lane with the vein. Knock up or the knock up vein push back setup. Zillion here. There we go. So now Nameless taking a page out of Dorado's yeah. book. They're going to have a very strong backline damage AD carry with the Zillion revive. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to, if they're really going for a late game team fights, I think they're going to want to tank so for top side here. Yeah, I think that would make a lot of sense with the team comp that they have. Uh, they also need yeah, some engage. Need um, I, I guess probably. potentially the Diana can be the primary engage, but something kind of a dive buddy for that Diana would be nice. Wukong uh, is going to be the answer here from Dorado. Some dive tools there to get on the backside. And you talked Ooh. about the Gnar for Nameless, but Septi, oh. once again, wanting to pick that one away. It is a comfort pick for him as well. Can combo pretty well with some of the stuff that we're seeing out of Dorado. And that means... This is a bot lane Wukong, I have to think. Oh, I thought it was bot lane Gragas. Ooh, maybe. They have options on Dorado, so yeah. depending on the matchup, I guess. I mean, they already know. They could, they could choose, but I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Gragas rather than the Wukong. However, Senna Wukong is certainly very strong. We'll have to see, maybe we peek into their match history as a jungle Olaf gets picked on the side of nameless here Apple, you know right? they don't they don't like scaling they don't want to go full scaling right nameless likes making plays happen they're picking the olaf here that is an interesting pick i am wondering i'm wondering what is their their plan for the olaf are they going to utilize it or are they going to try to get are they going to utilize it early and play towards top side or are they going to try to let that olaf be on an island on top side Right. Yeah, I, I think it's got to be jungle Olaf. Or sorry, yeah, Olaf top. Yeah, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Diana in the jungle, Olaf top, um, and then the cast in. So yeah, I think that that Olaf is kind of their one early game power point, maybe you could say. Obviously has some skirmishing potential and, and really likes getting things done in the 1v1. Um, against the Gnar, though... What, what does this kind of matchup look like? Because the, the range advantage there obviously could be a, a big difference maker. Yeah, it's pretty much gonna be it's pretty much just gonna be the Olaf getting beat on early by Nar as pretty much every melee to range matchup will go and Olaf gets the all-in potential I mean that's just how every Nar matchup pretty much works except it's range versus ranged although I think Camille has a lot easier time getting in the all-in than the Olaf because Olaf you gotta hit your axes and if you miss right. well then Nar gets away yeah Proxes Hyper, runs away as fast as his little Yordle legs will carry him. Yeah, I, I think I like uh, kind of the adaptations that we're seeing here out of Nameless. Um, lots of scaling like we wanted to see. I mean, lots of scaling. <laughs> Vayne, Cassidy, <laughs> Zillion, even the Diana. Lots and lots uh, of late game prowess there. 
And on the other side, it feels kind of a lot of the same, right? Uh, the Senna scales, the Victor scales, they've got team fighting, um, engagers and frontline with the Gragas, Wukong, and the Nar. Um, Crims, is there is there a certain side that you maybe give the advantage to here, or is it just going to come down to execution and who has better hands? Ooh. Um, all right. Just based on the pure team comps, nothing to do with the teams in this analysis. I think Dorado Gaming has got the better comp because... Okay. They're going to spike earlier, and they're going to spike earlier for quite some time. So I imagine early to mid-game, most of the mid-game, it's going to be pretty much, unless they mess up, they're going to have the power advantage. And usually when a team has a long, like a, a good long spike for a majority of the theoretical game, you would give them the favor there. That being said, if they do have these engage problems that I'm talking about, and they don't... And, and they don't get a really heavy lead early, I mean, the game's just going to keep going until, until Dameless eventually outscales them. So right. the question is, does Ken Dorado pull off the engage? That is the question. Can they get things done early on? Can they take advantage of those earlier spiking champions? Or are we going to see them kind of stall out in the mid game, kind of wait for Nameless to come to them and... That was, you know, a good strategy for them in the previous one because Nameless kind of didn't have a choice. But in this yeah. one, Nameless <laughs> are going to be happy to sit back, right? Sure, they have the Diana. Sure, they have the Olaf. Uh, and maybe some some early game prowess there as we seem to have uh, some DC problems here uh, on the teams. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be that question, right? Are Nameless going to be allowed to scale up? Are they going to be allowed to hit these maybe three, four item power spikes on the Vayne, on the Kassadin, and even on the Zillion and things like that? I want to talk a little bit about this top lane matchup because the Olaf is kind of, like I said, their early game spiking champion on the side yeah. of Nameless. So do you think that this Diana should invest resources into the top side so that they have something to kind of push back a little bit? Um, or do you think it is more kind of leaving Orion to his devices in that 1v1? You certainly wouldn't want Olaf to fall behind. So I think actually the game plan for Diana is you're just going to be on Wukong duty. You're just going to be a right. sentry, follow him around the map. If he goes for a play, you counter the play or anything like that and keep the game even. If you could be the ward on this Wukong, then that is going to be setting up your team to a very good mid to late game. Right, so not not playing so much for himself or for his lanes, more playing just to protect them, make sure that the uh, the enemy team can't get too much done in the early stages, and then, you know, just kind of trusting their scaling and their team fighting. Yeah, I do want to say, though, for the possible Rift Herald fight that will occur, I'm, I'm leaning towards it's going to probably happen. So in that case, Olaf is really strong at taking out the victor. Should be True. able to do well if, if it's somehow 5v5 and Senna's up there, Olaf with the zillion speed up in the ultimate yeah. will just absolutely demolish their back line and mm -hmm. can pretty much skirmish against Gragas and Wukong in fights anyway. So if they're using that to secure the Rift Herald fights, that is also a really good boon for this Olaf here. And you know, Olaf, Diana in a 3v3 or, you know, yeah. early game skirmish, very strong tools there. Cassidy, not so much, but Diana, Olaf should make up for that. Yeah, definitely true. Diana with kind of the extra attack speed, the passive procs, things like that. Obviously, uh, for Six Degree, this is maybe a little bit of a different look. We're kind of used to him playing, you know, things like the Zed, things like the Akshan, kind of those early aggressive champions. This is definitely not that on the Kassadin, which you kind of touched on. So we'll see how he does fare through the early stages. Obviously, against the Victor, not going to have a lot of wave control. Um, so might get pushed under tower, uh, needs to, to pick up as much CS, obviously, as he can. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the one place where I think Nameless are maybe the most vulnerable through the early stages is this Cassidy in the mid lane bot lane they're, they're pretty safe right they've got the speed ups the vein can kind of dodge away and, and roll away from some things but some ganks into the mid side especially once the wukong um obviously has that ultimate available can be pretty scary yeah i think that they're probably gonna have to avoid the first few dragons which you know is always gonna put you a little bit on edge if you're the scaling team right you let them mm -hmm. You, I mean, you take them where you can, but if they're around that objective and they have the better early game comp, you know, it's probably a good idea to let them get that instead and mm -hmm. invest resources on the other side of the map. So we'll see if Nameless can, you know, get the right balance of, hey, if, is this dragon free? Can we pick it up to stall the game? Versus, mm -hmm. yeah, they definitely have this dragon. 
uh, we should not check into that and get something, get an advantage somewhere else on the map. Yeah, making sure they pick their moments right and don't play into the hand of Dorado Gaming. We're going to take a little step back here as we wait for some of these connection issues to kind of be figured out here, but hopefully we'll be back without too much time. Game number two coming up. Nameless potentially have their playoff berth on the line, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few. The part comes the hatred did bring. Mm. Lost in the dark, we've come so far. Another step to rid the pain. Go and be counted till your last day. Cause only nightmares break their face.
Welcome back, everybody, to game number two. I apologize for the long delay in between these games, but our connection issues have all been solved. All ten players are on to the rift, and we are ready for game number two. Crims, a little bit of a different look for this game, but we do see level one invade coming through. Orion stepping back into them a little bit. Now going to pop the ghost. Is going to be able to get away. That's, I mean, ghost is a little short cool than that, all right. A little bit of a deja vu there, Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both teams opting for the same play Minions on that side. Gone. You know, I don't like the red buff ward like that. I'm not a fan. And I'm no. not a fan because it doesn't tell you what direction they're going. Are they right. going to do Krugs? Or are they going to skip Krugs and go up? Or are they going to skip Raptors? You don't know. I prefer the Raptor ward, Bush ward instead. That one gives a lot more information if you're paying attention. I can agree with that, yeah. It looks like they're actually just going to be camped out here in the bot side, potentially deal away this red buff. Yeah, that is going to be the plan for Nameless. So one thing we should touch on here as we do get into this one, it is actually the jungle Gragas, um, and it's hooked on plays on the Wukong Creatine actually piloting the Senna. So that's how things are going to play out here. Of course, it should be the Fasting Senna, the Wukong picking up the CS to try and get some extra gold. And the Taun potentially actually going to take advantage of this uh, surprising start here. Hooked on Flaze goes forward. This could be an opportunity. The uh, Creatine might be the target. No, going to switch now onto Flaze, who has to flash away. Red buff providing some slows, but they're not going to quite have enough to oh. go. But now they go back in the flash away. It doesn't matter. First blood, 0 to 60, enjoyer. Okay, I was almost going to say that was not worth it. But it does pay off in the end. That being said, the pathing for the con should be well known to both teams here. And Hybrid Carry going to be invading to try to make up for that cheese gank as much as possible. We'll be able to steal away that red buff. Did go blue, Gromp, and now invading this side. We'll see if he can pick up anything more or just kind of trying to equalize the red buff there on either side. And yeah, like you say, it looked for a moment like Nameless weren't going to get anything uh, from that early gank angle, but luckily for them, are able to pick it up. And crucially, both flashes, exhaust, and ignite now all on cooldown for the side of Dorado Gaming's botling. I think hybrid's a little bit confused on what to do here. Was gonna go for that top side gank, now going for the steal on the Raptors here. Okay, so the con what they I wonder if they know what the other jungler is doing. Cause that's gonna heavily affect who's gonna make it out of this situation. So you have potential roam here into the mid lane from hard only for bar. Dookie looking very low on mana. Gonna get slowed down. Has the flash available. Yeah. See if uh, Dookie can get himself out of this one. The bomb's gonna go wide. So we'll be able to step away. But top Wait. side, I just completely missed that Orion with the solo bolo. That is not how you're supposed to be laying on top side here. Nar, we didn't get to see it, but should be in our favor for at least two more levels. Fortunately for Septi, is going to find himself in the death chamber. Didn't burn flash. I he took a turret shot because he didn't flash Maybe. at all. So yeah. Yeah, well, you'd have to think some kind of shenanigans. Something weird definitely happened up here in the top lane, but we will not know what it is for now, though. It is Orion with the solo kill. Luckily for Septi, didn't have to teleport back to the lane, so is going to be able to walk on back here and have control of the wave state. With Joke, both junglers on the top side, though. We'll see if maybe we get... Uh, any sort of clashing up here. Khan behind a level for the time being. Orion getting very aggressive here. Wanting to bait them forward for the Taun. Now all four champs in the top side here. Hybrid carry is in the front lines. The Taun going forward. Yeah, lots of minions for the side of Umbra. That was a nice body slam. They're now Septi going forward, but he's going to go down himself. Hybrid trying to clean it up. Even flashes for the extra auto, but it is not going to come to fruition. Double kill for the Taun and Nameless. Arb doing a much better job of getting things done in this early game. Yeah, it looks like this is a man on a mission. The Taun getting things done for his team. By the way, the scaling team is about 2k ahead right now. Yep. And uh, this is a super sped up Diana here. 2 0 and 1 has a almost a 1k gold lead at 5 minutes. So that is almost twice the amount of gold. So huge advantage for the side of Nameless Umbra here. And maybe Diana picks up a, some uh, Magi's later after he bites the ring. I don't know, but it's looking like the Tons making the plays to win the game. Doesn't want to go out 0 2. 
definitely fighting for Nameless Lives. Hybrid is here into the bot side, but it looks like Nameless bot lane are just going to go for a little bit of a reset here. At the very least, hard only for Bard is returning to base. 0 to 60, hanging around just a little bit longer here. Has only 600 gold, so yeah, it's really feeling okay. Yeah, this mid lane uh, CS diff is huge. Uh, that is Ooh. a 23 CS difference with... And I believe that Six Degrees did receive a gank as well, so looks like this cast is certainly taking a beating. It's to be expected, but this is a little too much of a difference. Duki actually expending his ultimate here uh, to get this push under tower, so really trying to push this advantage, make sure that Six Degree can't see us too much under tower. It can be a little bit tricky at times on the Cassadin. Meanwhile, bot side though, some heavy trading going back and forth. Both junglers in the area are going to spot each other out. They're not going to be any sort of angle into the fight. So nothing going to come of that. But yeah, you're absolutely right. This mid lane matchup, I think Dookie doing a fantastic job so far on the victor. And Six Degree just doing whatever he can to keep X. up. Septi, ooh. Nice yeah, sidestep. If that step. X lands, that would probably be the kill. As we have jungle, uh -oh. up. Hybrid Carry might be in a bit of a gank situation, but now it's facing his own dangers here. Yeah, potential collapse coming through. Of course, for the Cassidy, did just take over to level 6, so was able to just kind of hit that R key to get on out of that potential gank. And it looks like with the priority that they've garnered in the mid lane, should be able to grab up the first dragon of the game here just seven minutes in. This is a 2,000 gold lead already for Nameless Umbra. Orion still putting down the pain here on the top side. Yeah, he's hitting like a poke champion, but he's, <laughs> he's a melee Olaf here. Um, I think with just the way the game's going right now, Nameless should also be able to pick up Rift Carol too. Oh, is this a dive? You don't want to see dive. it. Play to the bot side. Hybrid is going to look for this. 0 to 60 still has flash. He's going to use it. Hardly for Bard going to use this as well, but so much patience shown here from Hybrid Carry, saving the body slam until the flashes have been expended. And 0 to 60, he went back for more. He just rolled forward and he's going to be punished for it. Finally on the board, Ardorado Gaming, a successful gank in the bot side. Well, unfortunately, it's after Dragon has been taken, so they will not be able to pick up anything besides a little more gold on the field. And since Hybrid Carry was on the bot side, this Rift Herald's free for the taking. I know they did pick up a win on the board, but I think this is going to give up their Rift Herald. And there's still a full jungle to clear as well in Platon's level 6. Uh, you know, they did pick up a win, so that is good. But at, the question is, at what cost? Exactly that. The Taun has read it perfectly, realizing, hey, we have an opportunity here to start up the Rift Herald, try and extend our lead even further, knock off some plates and things like that. Six degree TP is back to the mid lane to provide some extra support if needed, and even hard only for Bard, roaming up here on the Zillion to provide some support as well, with the top priority that they do have, with them knowing Gragas is on the bot side. Maybe not necessary, but now, Zepti. see what else they can get done here on the top side. Zepti did just return to lane, has some this friends here. Guy chilling in the oh, bush. Oh, does have TP. Gragas in the area potentially as well. Rift Herald's going to be spawned up. The Taunt has the ultimate available. Going to be using it. Actually just missed it as Sefti jumped forward. Now flashing back away. Looking to kite this one out. No. Not quite going to be able to do so. Uh-oh. We have lost our play-by-play, -play, but I'll be taking over real quickly here. And Lindor is back. Lindor, you didn't miss anything. I swear. Alright. I didn't even notice I was gone. <laughs> okay. Well, that being said, that is a very low health turret. Unfortunately, Orion does die for that trade. Does have his Mythic already. That is absolutely huge. That is a massive CS difference in the top side here. And it's looking like Orion might be trying to take over this game here. It's looking like that massive CS lead up here, like you say, Stride Breaker, going to be huge for him if he can ever get on top of this Gnar. And meanwhile, on the bot side, I mean, Septi, or uh, sorry, excuse me, Zero to Sixty Enjoyer is not uh, is very much better than Septi. He has not been punished very hard at all in this lane so far, even with CS or better against the Wukong Senna lane, and even has a kill to his name. So for Nameless Umbra, yeah, they're wanting to play through this top side. Yeah, they're wanting to get Orion rolling, but. Some of their late game uh, scaling options are also faring quite well, not being punished uh, so far. Yeah. And for this upcoming dragon, they are going to have a TP advantage. We're just going to have a nameless umbra here. As you know, they're going to be able to flex around their members just in the current state. And I don't imagine Septi will be able to TP down there. So 
They could potentially pick up the next dragon. Depends on how they play it out here. And that'd be a two dragon lead plus a rift herald and top turret. That would be a massive, massive lead for the side of Nameless Hunter. Yeah, it's closing on a 2,000 gold lead here already. Of course, two kills on Orion, two kills on Faton, this top jungle duo. Definitely making the most of some of their early game skirmishing potential. And yep. like you say, that next objective is going to be the dragon. Do you think that this is a dragon that can be fought uh, from the side of Toronto? That is a big negative from me. They do not have their mythics completed. Yet on the side of uh, Nameless Umbra, they have basically the equivalent of two mythics. I know Nashor's 2 technically isn't, but uh, mm -hmm. get that MasterCard sound check <laughs> in here. There's no way Dorado should be fighting on this spike. I think they have to wait for their next spike in the later, the next round. All right, we'll see if that is going to be the case. Orion here chipping away at this top lane tower already. Going to be knocking this one down, so that's going to be a pretty big pickup for them. A nice little infusion of gold as well. And that's going to have their gold lead crest, the 2,000 gold mark. Meanwhile, in the mid side here, Victor is still doing a good job trying to, you know, keep his lead of up, but now here. bot side flash coming forward, 0 to 60, doesn't have flash available himself, lots of CC stun coming through, but look at this, the get out of jail free uh, card comes down, oh nice, Gragas cast, but 0 to 60 still has the heal, he's still looking for it, the taunt into the fray, has the ultimate, they go back to take out the vein, that's going to be enough, shield coming through with the dawning shadow over the top, 0 to 6, or, sorry, 6 degree on the run here, trying to maybe close the gap, hooked on flays into the backside, trying to take out the taunt, meanwhile the dive going the other way as well, it's a double kill for the cast, and hooked on flays will fall, TP is into the lane, making a difference here as well. Orion joining the fray here, still looking to push forward, still getting stunned up, getting taken out, gonna go down. Unfortunately for Umbra, maybe biting off a little bit more than they can chew here. They want to look for more, though, still looking to go forward. Faton looking worse for Bear, barely avoiding the second half of that laser. They should be able to grab this dragon, but that fight touch and go for a moment. Uh, I don't exactly remember okay. how much no money dragon. they had before, but... It is a 3k gold difference right now, and just due to these back timers, I think Nameless Umbra will not be able to get this dragon. I think they extended the fight a little too much. Mm -hmm. Should have probably backed a bit earlier after the first initial fight, and I think they would have gotten this dragon. Now it's going to be going to the hands of Dorado. I mean, fortunately for them, it's just a wind dragon, but. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! What is that? Victor damage, 0 to 60, just took almost his entire HP bar, just yeah, trying to pick up that cannon creep. Almost dead right there. Yeah. <laughs> very, very close. Dookie, with this uh, Luden's Tempest and, of course, the Sword Shoes is going to be feeling pretty strong. And I think that's kind of the one lane on the map right now that is is really going the way that Dorado wanted to. Obviously, you know, they're sending Wukong lane, they're scaling up, they're trying to get as many souls as they can, but this victor against this Kassadin, trying to abuse this advantage as much as possible. Baton is at the flash over the wall, realizing the threat that was upon him there, and will be able to get some, to some safety. Yeah, I know, you know, it's probably still in the favor of victor here, but... Six degrees is only 200 gold behind, so I would actually say it's a Can't be upset about that. Zero sixty way close to that. Todd wants to turn this around. Yeah, Dookie looking for the all in, but he's the one getting all in. Zero to sixty enjoyer says calculated in all chats and is going to be uh, getting his kill, a, uh, getting his team a kill there. Things are looking good here in game number two for Nameless Umbra. Dorado Gaming struggling a little bit to find a foothold and. Yes, they picked up the dragon. Yes, it's one dragon apiece. But if we look at this gold lead, it is looking very, very scary. Stun comes through with the wallop. Can they finish him off? Nice condemn. Flashes away. Can't sidestep the cask, though. Hybrid carry. Going to pick that one up. The collapse from Umbra is coming through here. Hybrid carry could be on the run. Septi as well. Trying to peel and kite this one out. Donnie Chat at the top. They're going to look for it. Wukong is here. The knockup comes through. He's going to have a second one coming up here shortly, but not quite able to find it. The Taun and the rest of Umbra just barely escaping. Kasten over the wall will live, so it's just 0 to 60 going down. The rest of the team limps away. Ooh. We'll survive the laser. That was really close, and shout out to Hard Only for Bard there. He kept his trigger finger pretty cold. Doesn't burn the ultimate early in the zone and was able to speed away. So that is an iron will 
when they work out for them as Ryan picks up a turret on the side lane here. Yeah, that's going to be an inner tower as well. Big golden fusion there from them. Gold lead almost up to 4,000 now here already. So Name is doing a fantastic job of continuing to accelerate their lead. And Orion, he actually wants to go for this hybrid carry. There is nowhere he can run. Has to flash over the wall. Will barely escape this very, very scary Viking up here in the top side. Orion's job now alongside the Taunt is just to bridge this mid-game gap until their Kassadin and their Vayne are online. Then the carries uh, in the mid and the bot lane can really start doing uh, some heavy lift. Yeah. You know, I'm looking over inside of the center here. They're in the loop. They're at 4 They're doing good. And they got their scaling members picking up farm, looking all peachy. However, there's one weakness I've noticed in the team. This is quite possibly the worst sieging team comp I have ever seen. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So if they do not have a way to get past the minions, or if this game, you know, if they don't have that Baron, I think it's going to be really hard for them to pick up turrets. They're going to win the fights, but the turrets are going to be a little difficult. The skirmish here in the mid lane, hybrid carry. Trying to look for the pickoff onto 0 to 60, but he's able to sidestep the cask and not get blown back into the team. Yeah. But yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Krim. It's, it's three melees, a Vayne who only has 450 range, and a Zillion who really isn't going to be doing too much in terms of sieging out those towers. So yeah, definitely uh, some of these can be defendable. Orion on the top side, though, has the Ragnarok available. See you later, Dookie. He's got the die two seconds later item, but will be going down. Orion and is... Olaf does great. Doesn't look like anything's gonna happen as the Rift Herald is gonna be dropped here, and this is kind of yeah. what they need to siege down the Earth. They need objectives like the Rift Herald. There's a bit of a skirmish happening. The zero to sixty has been found out by Septi, who had. Uh, Meganar at the ready, the auto attack is going to finish it off, meanwhile now mid lane, Faton is on the run, going to get flashed on, going to get knocked up in the air, has the GA for a moment, but actually doesn't even need it, turns it back around, Zillion ultimate was expended, but no, uh, Faton just doesn't die, doesn't need the revive, now they're looking for more, 6 degree, looking to go forward, Sefty on the run, is going to hop over the wall, but there's multiple hops available for this cast, and he's just going to keep on going, and off to the races on a killing spree now, Nameless Umbra, can do no wrong. Yeah, the chase down from the cast is proving quite good at killing low health Nars as they pick up the next, or they are setting up to pick up the next objective. Uh, if if they if Nameless Umbra does pull Dorado game into these objectives, I, I think I'm pretty confident they're gonna take these fights. Uh, if they're a heavy gold, they have the better team fighting comp, they have the scaling members. It's gonna work out. Now, the one problem they do have is that they overreach. As we have Orion here opting for another 2v1, he's gonna get on out of there. If they go for a dive too far, I think that is probably the biggest mistake Nameless Umbro wants to avoid right now. Yeah, I mean, we kind of saw a little taster of that in that bot lane skirmish where they won the initial fight, could have maybe evacuated and gone to grab the dragon, instead continued to try and chase forward and then were punished a couple times. That's what they don't want to happen, but the Taun, he's going to have a really easy job of picking up Septi here. The top is not enough. Donnie Shadow actually provides a lot of time. Oh, oh, oh. Turns it around, the tower shot finishes it off, the outplay coming through. They did not expect the cross map ultimate coming down there from Senna to provide some of that extra help. Unfortunately, uh, it's a big shutdown gold over onto the side. They're gonna pick up some objective turret gold here as well in the mid lane, and still a 5,000 gold lead, but it's gonna be a step in the right direction here for Dorado. Yeah, I think unfortunately a bit of nice guy syndrome down there. Both uh, all three members trying to give the kill to someone else. And that slight bit of hesitation lent to Nar getting the turnaround with the Senna ultimate there. That being said, you know, it's a small win and then a small loss for the side of the Minus Umbra. And this Olaf has a 2.5k gold lead onto Nar. I don't, I, I wonder what their solution is going to be from the side of Dorado. Because yeah. I don't think there's any way Septi can win uh, right now. Two items already that stands in inventory on top of the Mercury Treads. Oh, Sunspire Cape on Diana, now that you mention items. Ooh, yeah. 
This has been the, the build that's growing in popularity. We're starting to see uh, the Sunfire Aegis built up on some carry champions, Diana being one of them. I've seen it on Yone, things like that. The biggest thing to note about that is Sunfire Aegis gives 35 armor, 35 magic resist, and 20 ability haste. And the Mythic passive grants you 5% tenacity and slow resist for every uh, consecutive legendary that you buy. So that extra tenacity really is so key for some of these carry champions like the Diana who want to get into the middle of these fights really are tanking a lot of potential CC and damage from the enemy team. So I really like the pickup here. I think it can provide a lot uh, for this Diana that maybe doesn't otherwise happen. Um, it doesn't do as much damage though, is the thing, right? You don't have, you know, the proto belts for the reposition or the extra damage. You're not building any AP with your mythic, um, but it is still pretty good option. The Tom, though, might make me eat my words here a little bit as he's getting caught out, stunned up. Tenacity ain't gonna help you there. Although his Zillion ult might, the res is gonna come through. The Taun will be able to get out of jail free. Yeah, I think that's uh, some questionable positioning from the side of the Taun there, but a Zillion day to, there to save the day. And we have ourselves a two minute timer to the next dragon. <laughs> Nice cast coming through. Ult. The Taunt in the middle of the team using his own ultimate, but that is not enough. Teleport being channeled here into the back of the fray. Septi, not quite mega, about 50% on the Narbar, trying to build this one up very fast. Look at the damage coming up from the autos, but a nice condemn from 0 to 60. Now he's getting focused. Play is under the tower, looking for the knockup. That's going to be the Nar ultimate now coming through as well. Creatine will go down the Dawning Shadow. Not going to go off in time. A couple trade kills coming through. And that, actually, that Blasco just splits them all up. Oh no, Orion is here. Might be looking to turn this one around. Dookie standing alone. Blasco's over to join up with Septi, who's looking to take out Hart only for Bard. We'll do exactly that. And now the solo laners for Nameless stand alone. Orion looking to fight this one out, but no ultimate means he gets stunned up. He's got a shield. He's got some attack speed, but no. The shutdown comes through, and things are falling apart here for Nameless Umbra. 6 3, gonna try and do what he can. He will claim one, but he'll get traded back. That is all five members of Nameless that go down, and all of a sudden, it's only a 3,000 gold lead. Yeah, Dorado game proving they do have the ability to pull that trigger, get themselves a nice engage, and, you know, a little bit of misplays, a little bit of overdiving, but in the end, that is a positive victory for them. Will it net them the dragon, though? That is the big question here. Dragon spawning in 30 seconds is, of course, that next all-important objective here. It is internal they might have dragon. Burnt, they might have burnt their, their abilities too soon because now dragon's coming up. Oh, zero oh. 60. Oh, he this... didn't have enough vision to go for that kill. He didn't know if the team was behind him or not. Zero to 60. Uh, going to get away with face checking this time, but we have seen him punished time and time again. Put in his face where he may not belong. We'll see if they can still fight this one out. Did, of course, just get chucked out a little bit. But it looks like Dorado are going to have the inside track on this dragon for the time being. The Taunt in the bottom right. He's potentially picked off here for a fight, has the dash, has the flash. But that means that can't be, be up for the fight. Or engage. Yeah. The dragon oh, has to start it up. This is not a bad option for Simon Umbra taking that mid turn instead. Actually, not a bad trade. Never mind. Dragon goes over, but now the Taunt's over the wall. He's in the middle of five. He's going to go into the Zonius for a moment. Orion doesn't want to fight this out with the team. The Taunt is in. He's got the ultimate, but he goes down. Not going to be enough. Hooked on plays now. Could be on the chase. With the jungler down, Dorado, uh, it's a bit risky, but maybe you go for the Baron. But look, mid lane, 0 to 60, still peppering away at these towers, trying to claim the second one Ooh, in about big. as many minutes. So that's going to be a lot of gold into the Nameless Umber's pockets. They do only trade their jungler in return for the objective and a couple towers uh, for themselves. And Orion kind of split off from his team here. Nameless just kind of all trying to evacuate the premises in different directions. This could have to be Ragnarok getting burned. Yes, there it is. Orion has to be careful. The shield comes through. That's going to be the ultimate down from Hard only for Bard, but it's not required just yet. They've waited it out, and now they can take him down. They're going to kill the Zillion as well. Six degree on the run. And all of a sudden, Nameless Umbra, they've just thrown the lead away completely. This could be the Baron. I think they have to stick to a decision here. And yeah, they're going to go for the Baron. The Baron's going to be here. And the possible steal is on the table. All the Baron's going down, though. I, I, Nameless, i got a question. What is, it seems like you're uncoordinated. You had your AD carry going down mid lane. But then you have two members from the bot and checking into Dragon. 
I, I just gotta wonder, what is the game plan? You guys have to be on the same page here. Not gonna be able to go for any sort of hero steal there, unfortunately for them. But yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Crims. Even in that last engagement, we saw they, a couple of them went forward, a couple of them went backwards, and then Orion decided, okay, I actually do want to fight this, but then by the time he had decided he wanted to go in, everyone else was either dead or dying, and it was just a little bit too late, and yeah, it just seems like this team having a few coordination problems, so we'll see if they can kind of work out those kinks throughout this game, because if they don't, they're going to be sent home packing after this game, not able to... Alright, dangerous barrel. Rolling across your way, avoided by Zero Sixty. But I think their their biggest issue is just checking into dangerous vision that they don't have. Uh, Zero Sixty did it, but they did it a couple of times, and I think they're just not playing towards their win condition. I think that's the biggest problem. All right. Oh, gotta ask myself here. If Lindor is this connected or I am, we will see in a few minutes. And he has Zepi going to take trades into the line or under that turn. The ultimate is going to be going for Juki. He's going to be laying down the reckless swing and then run away promptly. We have 0 60 coming in on the flank. Ryan coming back in. He's going to dance with death here. Gonna go low and eventually dropping distance, not saving. And GP coming in from Sepi to go back onto the top side here as bottom truck is being sieged up. 060 versus Sepi in this top side. GP probably gonna back and then TP to the bottom side as well. So there's a lot of options open for the side of Dorado Gaming here. They're pushing on the bottom turret. And there is no real good form of wave clear from the side of Nimus Umbra here. 060 dropping low in the 1v1. Probably would need to burn his ultimate to win that eventually. Doing their best to hold off the siege on bottom side, but unfortunately, this side Nameless Umbra, their wave clear is is not really gonna be enough to stop these siege minions. Degrees on the side, they get a pretty decent engage on the hybrid. Looks like Wukong gonna burn the ultimate defensively as Wukong burns his. Tries to get the kill. Orion on the flank coming from the backside. Does Dorado Gaming know? They know now with that Axel coming through. They're flanked on both sides and they're caught in this massive choke. Hard only for Bard trying to land the stun. Barely doesn't get it. The Kong gets out of the way. Wukong clone at least went down. Zero to 60 just doing his best in a 2v1, but is going to get flanked by Dookie. This is the Q from Victor. Is it going to land? Yes, it does just in time. Hybrid Carry trying to do his best in this 1v1. Does go down with this Baron. Top side, FC going to be doing pretty good damage to the turret. Orion going to go up to match. We have 25 seconds on this dragon here. We have 0 to 60 down as well as three members from the side of Dorado Gaming. You would have to think the name of Umbra can get themselves in a position to grab this dragon. Although we'll see. Orion is not going to be going for the dragon. He's going to be pushing topside. Doesn't have TP. There might be a skirmish that he won't be there for. We'll have to see Taton going in. And we have multiple members making a beeline to this dragon. I have to wonder if they're going to face check into their doom. Six degrees as well as our own for Bark. Going to be trying to burn this dragon. A-A-S-A-P. Members coming in. They do get the finish. Zepi here trying to get something started for a fight. Hard only for Bark. Going to disengage that as well. And Nameless Ungra do not take that fight as they finally pull ahead. Now, after all of that, man, there was a lot that happened in that 10 minutes. It looks like Nameless Ungra have pretty much thrown their lead, but they have made a bounce back into a 1k deficit and a dragon up. So, that being said, I still think they're in the beneficial position. They're in the more uh, beneficial position at this moment. But they gotta make sure they don't be you know, making these face checks. The Dragon Gaming is coming at the vision, and this is where we see a lot of members from the side names that were just checking into their own danger. The Taunt almost got caught in the exact moment that I was talking about it. Zero 60 in a dangerous spot. Solo pushing the lane with no support. Oh, that cask is gonna land. Is this a dead AB carry? Yes, it is. Zero to 60. Just playing way too aggressively in the mid lane with a short range 80 carry and no support. I mean, that wave was going to bounce back into your team anyway. 
Oh, it's back. Well, you could have picked it up just by hanging back. I'm back. All right, we have our play-by-play -play back in the seat. <laughs> just Ryan in time for the fight. Engage. The green team going down. down. Down the back side of Dorado Gaming. Nar gets a pretty good ultimate. However, not enough damage to follow up. He's still going to take down the victor of all people. And this was a team fight without an 80 carry, Lindor. I'm sorry I stole that thunder from you. But no, I kind of came back right in the middle of uh, a <laughs> team fight. No problem at all. Yeah, zero to sixty going down early, but it is still Nail is able to claim the team fight victory. And Orion says, "I'm just gonna tank up this tower. Maybe they can go for the win." Thirty second death timers on Dookie. Still fifteen for Creatine and uh, Blaze and Carry. They've got the wave here. They've got what it takes to maybe take these out and force us to a game three. The Ton has okay, to be careful. Getting it executed. Zillion also got. Uh, yep, it sure was not going to be extended just yet. They're peppering away at the Nexus itself. The, the cast comes through the Zonias, but Orion able to finish that one off. And we are going to be going to a game number three. Yeah, and that game was a lot. definitely lagging yes right. i think we're both lagging right discord is yeah. having some some issues tonight but i think we're back um and nameless with that victory bringing us to the game number three uh crims give us give us just a few thoughts before we kind of move on yeah i think we're gonna have to throw that to orion in six degrees for saving that game there right in that team fight they were able to get a massive engage in basically a 5v4 0 to 60 wasn't even there and they didn't even use a zillion ultimate in that fight. So as you can see, when they get the correct setup, Nameless Umbra just absolutely steamrolled in that fight. But it was really close. They're making a lot of mistakes up until that point. But as soon as they got it back into their hands, clean a clean sweep. I wouldn't say clean victory. Clean sweep in that team fight. And they're able to bring this game to a standstill. One to one. And we're waiting for the final game. We absolutely are. Yeah. I mean... You're absolutely right. Six degree and Orion putting the team on their back there. Zero to 60, unfortunately, not really able to get off the ground in that game. But look at this Olaf damage. 27,829 8, 27, damage for Orion yeah. on the Olaf, putting on a I show wonder, there. I wonder how much of that is just beaten on Septi on the top side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> definitely a lot of it is just going ham against that poor Nar, but... Still a fantastic performance there from Nameless. We'll take a little step back here. I'm sure the teams are looking to get ready for game number three. So give us one second and we'll be here with the final game of the series.
Welcome back, everybody. We are just jumping straight into the draft here. Um, unfortunately, I'm having some connectivity issues here. I cannot see the draft. So, Crims, please take it away here. All right. So I'm going to be the eyes and ears for Lindor here as Zillion for Nameless game picked up. Looking like that's actually going to be a high-priority champion this series. Something you might have not expected before. As now for a uh, response pick from Dorado Gaming, going to be on the field here. Senna's been taken off the board, as well as Renata and Lilia. I don't see the second ban, so I am not sure what that is at the moment. Maybe production can cue us into that one. As we might just have a Lucian Nami pick up here. I really can't imagine Lucian without Nami. I would have to... <laughs> I would have to say that that is a timeless duo here. And a Diana Steel. Interesting. Okay, GP was banned. Is Nyla allowed on this patch for no. the tournament? No, so that was just a troll hover. Okay, Ezreal. I would like to see Nameless pick up the Ezreal for 0 to 60. I think that that is a pretty good champion. Oh, I can see! I have eyes. I can see the draft. Good, because I'm go. doing a terrible job being your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, I, I like the Ezreal lock-in. Um, Zero to 60 has struggled a little bit with knowing uh, what his positioning needs to be and kind of uh, being a little bit too aggressive. So the Ezreal can maybe shore up a few of those mistakes. Um, compare pretty well with the Zillion as well. And ooh, that ooh. is a very quick Olaf. They like that Olaf-Zillion combo there. You know, I think Ash might have also been a pretty good uh, pick as well. And seeing as how it basically just spies on the enemy jungler the entire game, it is pretty strong support pick. Mm -hmm. As there's the Nami pair up, of course, would have got banned if they didn't pick it now. So Lucian Nami, yep. the tri tried tied in duo. I messed up the pun, Lindor. I'm a terrible. I, me I messed it up. <laughs> You know what? It was a good effort. We'll we'll give you some some points for for giving it a good try. I mean, has uh, anyone ever said tied in true? No, <laughs> it's original. <laughs> I made that up on the spot. I just I messed up the execution. All right. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. No, I, I like this Lucian Nami. Obviously, like you say, a very good duo. Um, the Diana as well. I think we're showing kind of more early game um, options with a real strong run. mid game spike with the mm -hmm. Diana. That's what the Diana will offer you there. And with the layering on top of the Nami and then presumably the Lucian damage should give them a strong mid game as well as pretty good skirmish in the 3v3 yep. bot side. And to be honest, Dorado has been winning heavily on that side anyway. So I think this is a good mm -hmm. idea. Yeah, absolutely true. Gives them more tools to kind of keep pressing those advantages that they're finding. They're banning away the cast in this game. Uh, I think that's a good call considering the performance we just saw Six Degree have on the pick. And the Vagar, which they've been banning all series, still not going to be available. They need to uh, probably pick a top laner here uh, into the Olaf and then look to kind of round their team composition out with that mid lane position. But we'll see what they want to go for. Ooh, Oriana. Now this is a questionable pick because now your hmm. mid lane can be countered unless they're flexing here. I definitely think they should have went with top lane. Unless they think there's an Olaf jungle flex. But Olaf's not really yeah. good in the jungle anymore. So I think Dorado made a bit of a drafting mistake here. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. Oriana, pretty safe blind pick anyway. Yeah. As maybe a champion favorite getting picked up here. Zed on the field into this Oriana. Ooh, we finally get to see a six degrees Zed. Something that uh, he definitely likes to play is his most played in solo queue um, this year. And well, we have lost Lindor yet again. It is unfortunate, but yes, we have. Oh, wait, he's back. Do we have the, the pristine Lindor back in this call? I, I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> My internet is, uh, yeah, doing some funky things tonight. But Zed Swain are the lock-ins. I think the Zed into the Oriana can fare quite nicely. Yes, yes, that is that is certainly the case. Um, Zed in the jungle here certainly has a really good Ooh. first clear with that passive. Activates on every hit. I don't know if you know that, Lindor. Mm -hmm. but Zed passive 
works on every attack in the, on the jungle creeps below 50%, does not need to be re automatically resets. So that is why Zed jungle clears are so good. And then we have a set being rounded out for the top side of Dorado Gaming. Mm. So, I mean, the shield does play well into Olaf's true damage. But there's a lot of... Uh, it, it's a skill matchup, because there's a lot of things that can be avoided if Olaf hits ultimate at the right time. And if he doesn't, then Set could be able to lay down a bunch of damage, as well as trade very well pre-6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm actually surprised um, to see this Zed pick. I mean, we're assuming it's going into the jungle. We'll have to see, but I, I think it's a safe assumption. But the thing is... Six degree is kind of their their Z player here for Nameless, uh, typically. So I'm not sure how they can kind of flex this around and get the Z mid. I think it probably will be the Z jungle, but it's an interesting flex pick for them for sure. Well, we, I mean, we're assuming Olaf's going top, so we may be bamboozled, but I'm pretty I'm pretty confident in that decision. Yeah, Orion definitely <laughs> likes the Olaf. I think he agrees with us in, in the fact that it's just much better as a laning champion right now as opposed to in the jungle. So yeah. I, th I think we're going to be correct on this one, but it is, is kind of an interesting adaptation. Orion's saying, uh, nerfs be damned. <laughs> I will be playing Olaf topside anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, there's just a small nerf on the Olaf. I think it was just, um, what, mana cost on the Q? And uh, actually... I think a lot of base w a, little. a lot of base HP right. was removed but he gets more <laughs> attack speed so mm -hmm. if you play it right it is a buff but i think right. in most cases it is a nerf that being said orion proving that olaf's still viable in the top side at least versus nar <laughs> yes absolutely we'll see how it does into the set here um of course can ragnarok potentially the face breaker and try to not line up for the haymaker and, and mm -hmm. different sort of combos there um i think it'll be a little bit rough for the olaf in the early stages though what do you what do you think about that yeah, Set is just such a massive trader in the early games. His combo with the pull into the double Q, or sometimes you get triple Q, and then if they try to trade back, you just haymaker them in the face. It's really hard to play around, so most of the time you avoid that stage of the game. Mm -hmm. That being said, I don't think Olaf has as clear uh, targets in this game as in the previous game, because the okay, hold Oriana, the a lot more mobile. We have Swain Top... Vagar. Olaf jungle, Zed mid. Okay, we did get bamboozled. <laughs> we did get. Bamboozled. You know, I thought in the back of my mind they're gonna do it. They're gonna bamboozle me. Why do people gotta do that? Okay, so Swain into set should just theoretically be able to coast right on by this set and scale into the late game. However, set does have the all-in potential for a large majority of the game. Have to be. Very careful not to get ganked either with the set setup. So I think, you know, I don't think, have we seen Orion play safe side yet? I don't think so. Not very often, if at all, yeah. Um, even when he's on things like the NAR, like blind pick picks, it's, it is more than playing for the top side. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, and I'm also interested to see how Thetan kind of fares on this Olaf. We'll see. I haven't seen a, a jungle Olaf since kind of the, the mini rework there. So, um, to see how the clear speed is. Obviously, Olaf traditionally is that type of jungler that just wants to burn the jungle down as fast as possible and can kind of get in on some early skirmishing, maybe get into some counter jungling situations. So we'll see what Thetan kind of wants to get done. But on the other side, Dorado Gaming... Uh, with this kind of five-man composition that they have, they do have a little bit of team fight, um, some wombo combo with maybe the Diana, the Nami, and the Oriana. Uh, but otherwise, I think this is mostly a bot-focused team. Do you think that's the correct read? Yeah, they're going to want to <laughs> play through bot in most of these games. Get those dragons. I mean, they could also play through set on the top side as well because Swain is going to take a while to get right. on board. So there mm -hmm. is, it is possible to punish him. But, I mean, just, like, the Lucian Nami is so strong, you probably want to play through the bot side in this game. Get those dragons. Absolutely true. All right, well, we've got game number three coming right up. Remember, it is a berth in playoffs, an automatic berth in playoffs on the line here in this game three. The winner will secure that spot. The loser will have to qualify in playoffs, likely through that qualifi qualification tournament. So a lot on the line here. Nameless Umbra, of course, looking for that reverse sweep after they took home game number two. Dorado 
trying to kind of erase that from their memories here and walk away with a 2-1 victory. Don't go anywhere. Game 3 coming right up. Game three here between Nameless Umbra and Dervado Gaming. I'm Lindor here with Grims and Grims. This is the first time in a little while that we've seen this team go to all three games on stream. I'm excited to get this number three underway. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is where we have the biggest sweats, the biggest tryhards come out in the game. And also, you know, who has the guts to win the game? So it's always interesting to see when the pressure's on who arises 
as we have a safe start from both teams. No one, no one invading this time around. Yeah, straight up five point start here from both sides. We'll see where these junglers do want to start. Of course, Baton on the Olaf, likely going to go for a six camp clear hybrid carry on the Diana. I would expect to do similarly. Just going to depend on what side they do start on. And yeah, like you say, so far, nothing crazy going down. No information going to be gathered on either side. And we're just going to see both sides kind of heading towards their lanes. And it is actually hybrid carry looking for a unique start. Going to start leashless on his raptors. Yeah, and I like doing this start on Diana myself. It's very fast, and you are able to basically clear just as fast as someone would to start with a leash. So very good to pull from Diana, but I usually like doing that on the invade, so they're going to do that on their own side though. This means that they could be looking for a very quick setup game top side, we'll see. Sempi already trading as bot side trade. My goodness, 0 to 60 is oh, ignited. Coming forward, flash from Lucian is going to finish it off. And yeah, we talked about this bot lane matchup, how the Dorado gaming bot lane has been getting the better of them so far. They are starting things off on the right foot here in game three. Yeah, I do have to question the bot lane from Nameless. I mean, you know that Lucian Ami are going to win that level one. There's no reason to fight for that. And as you can see, they do get punished for it. Yep, even the tier start on Ezreal, so has a little bit less uh, XP to be working with. Orion with the pull here. Ooh, never move. Not quite getting Sephi uh, under the tower there. Six degree, though, showing us some nice little Zed mechanics and good trading there in the mid lane. And uh, going to be looking to just kind of weather the storm a little bit through these early levels. Septi though. Ooh, that, the is, uh, that is a questionable evade because he's being surrounded by three yeah. members here. Never move going to land. Six degree on Prowl Sephi here. has, has flash. They can close that gap. Ooh. Doesn't look like they will be able to. Oh, actually, tons of damage coming out from six degrees. Septi on the run. Does he still have Haymaker? No, but the flash does have to be expended. So, yeah, like you say, kind of a little bit greedy on that invade. Maybe just needed to drop a ward and try to get on out of there, but will be punished for his sins. Yeah, and now for this bot side here, we're going to have to play very, very carefully. Uh, you play any fighting games, Lindor? Not really, no. A little bit, you know, okay. Smash Bros, but. Do you know what the touch of death is? The what of death? The touch of death. The touch of death is no. wherever you get one attack on your opponent and then you kill them from that point on. That is mm. the touch of death. And there is a possible touch of death coming for this bot side right here. Because if they ever get ganked again this early in the game, I think it's going to be GG. Their, their team is going to lose. So it's all on 0 to 60 here to make sure that they play safe and they don't give away any more kills. Hybrid carry is hovering around in the area. Maybe he has a kind of a sense uh, for exactly what you're talking about there. Needs to be a bit careful here, but level two on both zero to 60 and hard only for Bard means there's not too much threat here. So you're gonna be happy to steal that camp away. Get himself a tiny bit of a CS lead um, over the Olaf, considering he still has, you know, these camps on the top side to farm up. And yeah, overall things fairly even. Obviously the first blood being the, the one exception there. All right, looks like the Ton here is going to try to break the trees. And this could be a dangerous position for the side of Dorado Gaming. Or a possibility for them to get another kill. We're going to have to see here if the Ton might be running right into hybrid carry. Did, did hybrid carry take the rest of them? Uh, I think he did, did he yeah. Away? Um, maybe looking for a potential dive here onto six degree. Not going to be able to find it though. Baton able to defend. Look at this yes lead though that Dookie has built up in this mid lane, abusing this range matchup. 34 to 13. Six degree not having a good time so far. I would wager half of this gold lead is based on the CS difference alone. But mm -hmm. There's a CS lead in every lane. Yeah. So do I win lane pretty well? As we would expect from their team comp here, Orion trying to do his best to trade back. Fortunately, oh, six oh. degree has the event taking one axe would do it. Flash traded for flash. Maybe a bit of a short cast there on the axe throw from the ton. Dookie gonna escape with his life. Yeah, I think six degrees opting for more early kill level five. 
Maybe level six all in might have done the trick. Hard to say. Okay. We'll see if the TP is going to be burned for Dookie to pick up this farm. Sure, it would be. Really would uh, increase the CS3. Dragon is up. And the farm is in the area. And we have a pushed up bot side. Well, bot side Orion getting dove. Yeah, it's Ooh. just so simple from the side of Dorado Gaming. These trading patterns for Orion are so awkward because he keeps landing the never move. Yoinking Septi in, and then Septi just fakes breakers him. He's like, okay, you're pulling me closer to you? Well, guess what? Now I can stun you, but top bot side. Taton might be looking for a play here. The double bombs Nami are gonna land. Fly. Stun comes through. Yeah, no flash for this. Nami is the gonna be from Shishimi. Oh. Taton gonna get it turned around on him. Exhaust That's is going it. down on both sides. Creatine still trying to fight this one out, but... Not going to be able to find anything else on the back side. Still a one-for-one -one trade there. I think that's in the favor of uh, Dorado. Yeah, that is the favor of Dorado. They go even in a disadvantaged position. Uh, he's Putin also going to pick up all this farm, so they yep. isn't going to lose out on that. And with the jungler dead, they can oh, pick no. up the dragon. Uncontested. Bard only for Bard. He's overstayed his welcome. Hybrid carry. He's about to get on the action here. Has some gap flows available. Does he have the damage, though? I think that was a little bit of a They should have went for Dragon. You can see, Septi, as we can see, Seth's just going to win the trades. Not much of Orion can do there. Yeah, he needs to sit back on this Swain. Try to just farm up, and of course, once he hits, you know, level 11, gets a couple items under his belt, the Swain definitely will have some team fighting prowess. That's exactly what Orion's looking for here, but is struggling a little bit. Yeah, we can see some of these trading patterns from Septi looking very strong. Yeah, one thing that Swain can do is outlast his landing opponent. Unfortunately, Septi doesn't have mana, but can you try to utilize that HP? Bit of a contest here. Awful scenario for both teams. Yeah, they just kind of split up here. Six Tree was standing on a ward the pawn. Gonna eat a bit of a culling and a bit. I mean, basically all of it gonna get taken out. Now hybrid carry in the front lines is looking a little worse for it. Flash from creatine can't quite finish it off. Now we've got the Zelda coming through. Deathmark is down. Hybrid carry will get taken out. But six degree on the wrong might side. Be on the wrong side of the map. We'll see if they can find any sort of collapse over the wall here. He is just gonna hit that channel recall. And will he be able to escape? Yes, yeah, so one for one trade there. No dragon has been claimed. A little bit of a gold lead here on the side of Toronto. Creatine is getting stronger by the second here. Three and zero. Was able to pick up a kill in that fight. Doing massive amounts of damage to two. Was almost able to kill zero to 60 as well. Yeah, this this meathead might be the key to victory for the side of Toronto Gaming here. Yeah, this, this Lucian, like you say, likes to get things done in the early game, can spike in the mid game as well alongside this Diana. So the gold and the kills so far for Dorado are in the right places. And while it's uh, you know, not, not too much in their favor just yet, the gold lead is certainly helping them out here a little bit. Orion's still on the top side doing what he can. Still some heavy trading, but oh, actually potential here. No, Orion not able to find the chase down, wants to pick up this wave instead. And is actually suffering a little bit, pretty much in every lane here for Nameless, uh, falling behind just in terms of CS and experience. He wanted again the suplex over. Orion able to finish him off though. Gets the outplay with the ultimate, the demonic ascension. Hybrid carry is there to pick up the scraps though, so both uh, top laners find themselves with a gray screen at least for another few seconds. Yeah, I think. Did he have the flash for that? Because I think he could have gotten a better ultimate into his mm. towards his jungler for a more yep. cleaner kill. On the left, picking that up. It works. So it's, it, the game looks kind of stable right now, but actually, it's it's on an edge as who's going to take this lead here. And that's gonna that's gonna basically say who's gonna get most of the stuff that we can. I think Nameless are getting pretty close. Oh my goodness, look at the huge. damage coming out. The culling is tanked up a little bit behind the minions. This might be enough, but in general, this Lucian Nami lane is so, so scary. Six degrees is going to face check a Diana into the death mark, actually using that to dodge away from the ultimate. Oh, no, the damage can't. still comes through. The ultimate from the Orianna as well, and Septi is actually keeping them off of this Rift Herald. Meanwhile, outside oh, though, they're looking for it. This is huge. The exhaust comes down, the revival comes down as well. Creatine looking a little worse for wear, has to run for the hills. 
Oh, less than 100 HP, but still oh, ticking alive. Oh, 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 no, oh, 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 they're gonna die! Creatine! <laughs> and one place! No, you go that way. You go that way. No, you go that way. Be on top side. Another kill comes through. That's gonna be Orion teaming up with the Taun. Uh, but what can a Dorado get done in the mid lane here? It's gonna be the Rift Herald spawned up. You're grabbing a couple plates. It's not gonna be the entire tower. You have to be careful of a potential collapse coming through here, but it is going to be enough to kind of equalize, or well, maybe not equalize, but try and uh, stop this from too much snowballing in the favor of Nameless. Someone please put that. <laughs> please. <laughs> I would, production please, clip, thank you. Uh, the, <laughs> that being said, on a serious note, uh, Nameless Umbra have picked up pretty big wins on both of their side lanes. Now they did pick up an L in the mid lane, but two W's versus one L. I think they they think they won out on that situation. But they're not they're not out of the park just yet. They still need to make a few more plays to get back into this game. I mean this Lucian, even though there was a bit of a mishap in the box side, still very, very strong. Yeah, absolutely true. Gale Force already in inventory. Uh, we'll see what he goes for next. Maybe it's the Essence Reaver. Maybe it's something else. But yeah, still feeling exceptionally strong. 3-1 and one for the Lucian. 3-1 and one for the Diana as well. These mid-game spiking champions feeling very, very strong. And I don't know. Do you think there's a scaling advantage on either side here, Crims? Like, I guess there's Ezreal Swain on the one side and kind of like the Orianna on the other. Uh, do you think Nameless have an edge when it comes to scaling? Yeah, I think when it gets to the late game, it's going to be over. Um, Zillion is going to be a huge advantage over the Nami. Right. And even though Ezreal doesn't do insane damage, it's going to do comparable damage to the Lucian, as well as providing lots of poke, which right. is something that, if utilized correctly, is massive in a late game objective. And then, of course, slaying into set is just a win from the scale. Yeah, but not yet, and it's not Orion. Pulls him back in and then gets face breakered by his own minions. Unfortunately for him, just really can't uh, can't seem to solve this issue up here on the top side. Yeah, he wants the HP. Again. He wants the regen, but he keeps mm -hmm. getting himself into engage range. So yeah, has to play smarter around it. And honestly, Steffi's not even building him on. He's winning. So there you go, lots, of, lots of damage coming through. That's basically an entire culling. On the hard only for Bard, who will just barely escape. The one saving grace for the spot lane is, of course, that Zillion ultimate. When these all ins do come through, if the Zillion ultimate is timed correctly, if they're in the right area, you can really stop a lot of the aggression and tether uh, kind of this Lucian Nami lane. But they're pretty happy with the lead they've garnered so far. They're going to be feeling pretty happy with where the wave is right now, kind of forcing 0 to 60 to overextend. But mid lane, Dookie might be in a bit of trouble. Nope, he didn't be able to get himself away with some speed up, but now bot side 0 to 60. Oh no, he's getting rooted up. So much damage coming out of creatine. That's gonna be the zillion wait, ultimate. No, wait. Oh no, shift, flash. No, it's a little bit too early. Can't quite time it correctly, but now they're gonna look for hard only for Bard, but the exhaust comes through, and Nameless wants to get the found the outplay. It's a double kill onto the 80 carry mid lane. They are gonna have to have something traded back. Orion topside needs to survive this engage as well. Septi looking for the 1v1, but doesn't have an ultimate of his own. Yoink back in, but not quite under tower. I don't see why you would take that trade to Septi. Oh, yeah. And that, that might be his goodness. downfall. Bye. Yeah, the line just screen rolls that extended fight. Uh, Set is pretty much only good in the trading scenario. You don't want to take an extended fight. But let's talk about that bot side. Creatine and Hooked on Flays. Initial fight set up really good. And then a bit of a mistake. I think you just kill Ezreal. You pop the Zillion ultimate. And mm -hmm. Ezreal's just in such a bad spot, you just kill him over again. And right. I think that's the worst result happened for Creatine and those plays free. there. And there was a huge misplay because now, 0 to 60 is 5 and 1. Yeah! Finally having a game here on the Ezreal for 0 to 60. Yeah. Has had a little bit of a rough, a rough night leading up to this point, but now is off to the races, has what he needs to potentially carry his team. Uh, we did see Orion getting picked off a little bit in the top side as Hybrid Carry picked up his fourth kill of the game. So that's going to be feeling pretty good for the Diana here. But still a tight game back and forth. Zero, I mean, look at oh. that damage from the Ezreal. That is just going to feel so nice. Yeah, 
Yeah, just some misplays from the boss side there he would have been killed. And really quickly taking advantage of that. Yeah, look at that. It's, it's pretty much going as their favor now. Oh my word! Yeah, the Sheen procs with this Essence Reaver just so, so disgusting. And this is an early two item power spike for the Ezreal. Okay, yeah, the Mana Mune isn't uh, quite transformed yet but will be shortly, and I mean, that's just going to be even more power in this Ezreal tank. What do you think the answer has to be here for Dog? It looks like they are going to look to try and gank into the bot side. Hybrid Carry is here. Yep, this is going to be the play. Flash is traded there as the bubble goes wide. Can they close the gap? Yep, looks like Hybrid Carry can. Going to pull him back in. Zillion Ultimate is available, has to use it on himself. So 0-60 enjoy is going to be able to get away, but now Orion with the TP into the backside. Are they going to look for this fight? They never move from moving back in. Creatine, though, not quite going to be able to turn it back around. Septa is, is here as well. 0-60 to now going to be the focus, and they will take him out. Orion into the three. What can he do? In the Demonic Ascension, he's healing. He's doing damage. He's still alive, but it's not enough. He only trades the one for one. It's going to be a two for two, as all is going to be coming to an end. And again, Krenz is just so, so close in these fights. We really haven't seen this game broken up just yet, but the taunt. He says, it's my turn to try and join the fray. Still has the ultimate available, looking to take out Septi. Will be able to do exactly that, and that's going to be nameless. Now, finding a small victory there, starting to shore up this gold lead, and with the scaling advantage on their side, they're starting to feel like they're finding some legs here. Yeah, I think Dorado should probably make a play as a 5 minute you want to avoid these skirmish scenarios, they're not going to go in your favor, especially since uh, the Ezreal is going right now. So, you want to blow them up as a team, you get team damage. Uh, we here, we're going to take the dragon. And smooth flat out of that situation. But yeah, they have to play as a five man youth thing. Use their team comp mid power spike. But. It might be a little too late. We'll see how much 060 can get done. But with this Ezreal poke, might, he might be able to cancel out their opportunities to get a very good fight. Team fight. Team fight. Yeah, the eggs are uh, kind of stacking up in this 0 to 60 basket. So we'll see what this Ezreal can get done. The Lucian that was na once 3 and 0 is now 3 and 3. So definitely suffering a little bit through these last few minutes. And the gold lead becoming smaller and smaller only about a thousand gold in the favor of Dorado gaming and we kind of see here as we flick over to the gold where most of that lead is and it looks like it's a little bit in the jungle or i should say a lot of it in the jungle 1500 gold uh diana is up over the olaf the rest of it is not really anywhere else so a lot of the gold for uh, Dorado gaming right yes the oriana with the the cs discrepancy there as well so yeah, I mean, it is kind of this mid-jungle duo that are looking to carry this mid game, and Yoriana is kind of closing in on a two-item power spike, building up towards that Seeker's Arm Guard, but it's not a, an aggressive um, second item choice here, so it's definitely not going to be hitting super hard. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and uh, go for this Rift Trail. They do have TP advantage, so Umbra has to be careful to how they approach this. And Duki is back, so if the fight were to break out, I would not recommend that for Umbra here. Looks like the Herald is going to be picked up cleanly there. Oh, the Ryan, he's an aggressive dive here. Yeah, he wants to finish off the tower. We'll be able to do exactly that. And with Dookie being so low on mana, not really able to retaliate there. So we'll be looking at okay. Um, but yeah, so for for Nameless here, what are we waiting for for the next couple of minutes? And then, and then same thing for the other side. Where, where do you think these teams should be looking at? Yeah, Nameless definitely want to pick up a few more power spikes, get maybe one more, one more item, some of their champions here. But I think the key to this game for either team is how long the team fights. So for the side of Dorado Gaming, you want a very short burst team fight. Basically, you want your team to get on multiple opponents from the side Umbra and key targets, and basically wombo them to death, burst them out and get the kills before Nameless Umbra can respond. However, in any scenario where they do not get that burst damage down, in the extended fight, I mean, with champions like Swain, Olaf, Ezreal, and Zillion, it, the extended fight's gonna go heavily into their favor. So that's why, you know, when we asked about the scaling earlier, when they get tankier and more HP, 
they're going to be able to scale up in these fights and survive the burst. But until that point, it's going to be a little bit dangerous for Nameless Umbra. But it's closing in for them. They're going to be able to survive pretty soon. Right, getting towards those item spikes, getting towards kind of some of those tank thresholds that they need to survive some of that burst that we see. Ryan on the bottom side is going to get caught out here. Diana Ultimate is going to be wasted. Dookie in the area as well. Shockwave not quite going to find its mark there. Orion does have to burn the ultimate in response, but is going to be all right. And his team's pushing in the mid lane here, trying to claim what would be their third tower of the game. Don't think they quite have the minions to do this. The Taunt actually is just going to tank it up, and they will be able to pick that one up. Collapse coming through here from the side of Dorado, but is spotted out on a ward, and I think it should be a pretty safe evacuation route here for Nameless, but they look a little bit disjointed here. There's kind of an invade going down for Paton, some of their team getting caught in the jungle here, and 060 is just kind of chilling in the mid lane. Maybe they're trying to set a little bit of a trap here, though. It's going to be a hybrid carry going in first. Does have to flash away. Now the ultimate coming forward from Zed, looking for the death mark, looking for the kills, looking for the moves. Going to be able to find one as actually it's the Ezra ultimate that finishes it off. Septi in the front lines. Hybrid carry has a lid, just a sliver of HP. 0 to 60 going to finish that one up. And Creatine's on the run. He can't do nothing. This Ezreal is just too dang strong. 0 to 60 with the triple kill. Going to get wasted by Orianna on the other side. But that is all she wrote. Dookie now on the run on his own. We get chased down Orion, misses the never move, but still has the demonic ascension. Hard only fired with the speed ups. It's only a matter of time before the ace comes through. Maybe the two second later death is gonna do it. No, the ace just before the Nami spawns and aimless in the driver's seat. Now it feels like in this game number three. Yeah, and that was a big, big uh, huff of hopium there for the side of the Rado game. Taking a team fight where they clearly don't have the vision and quite spread out as well as you can see there's a lot of fights going on. It wasn't really a deep wombo, not playing with the strength state either. And then 0-60, to 60. he criticizes earlier games here, but this Ezreal ain't afraid to go for the kills. Definitely not. Eing forward in that fight. Now has the um, Shirelle the grudge to get some slows down, just making it so much easier to land subsequent cues onto targets. And I mean, we saw it there. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Creatine and just absolutely eviscerated him. So it feels like this Lucian had his moment in the spotlight earlier on, but now with a couple of the missteps that they've made, a couple of the kills that they've given over to this Ezreal, 0-60 to should be able to dish out much more damage for the rest of this game. Yeah, I mean, I think he's going to win... He was gonna win anyway, but I mean, he did exhaust. Uh, fair, <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like fighting someone in the cast. I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that being yeah, said, but... you are correct. The game is starting to swing into the favor of uh, Nameless Umbra here, and this is to point out another game where they went with the more scaly side. And we've successfully gotten ourselves to a pretty even mid game in both games here. So, you gotta wonder if the Rada can close out this game or not. Not all in. Yeah, Orion uh, for the all in, or should I say Septi looking for the all in onto Orion. But Baton is gonna be the first to join here. Haymaker goes by. Doing an easy cleanup here. Meanwhile, though, in the mid lane, Hardly Fart is gonna be in trouble. Didn't he? His own ultimate is gonna go down. Culling gonna find some members. Six degree with some jukes using the shadows to get himself out of there. Dookie still on the run. Does he have what it takes? Not just yet, and now the duo of Orion and Khan have joined the free creatine. Getting over the wall with the dash, that means that there's not going to be anything coming out here from Umbra, as this is a very messy fight. I don't think this is what they want to be happening. Hybrid Carry still in the front lines. Is going to be dissuaded a little bit by some of these mystic shots peppering in. But could Dorado have their eyes on the Baron here? Two for one trade for them across the map as they find a team fight in the mid lane. Not sure they have what it takes to start this one up, but it looks like maybe they think they do. Baton is dead. Gonna no start it. Here. Yeah, TP coming Maybe. through. Still 16 seconds on Baton. Six degree in the area, but I don't think he can do nothing here. This is going to be a good stand pick up. And honestly, just a flat out mistake from the side of Nameless Umbra. 
no reason to fight there. Or we'll see if they can pick up the kill stuff in fight now. They might have a reason to fight now. Orion into the Demonic Embrace has the Zonias as well. Oh, look at the True Shot Barrage finding a few members. Can they fight this one out? The Revive coming oh. through as well. They played this so incredibly well. They're looking for the fight. Shockwave going to pull 0-60 to 60 off of it. Orion looking for the chase down onto Hybrid Carry, who doesn't really have much left in the tank. 0-60 to 60 will finish that one off. So the Baron is picked up, but in the ensuing fight, 3-for-1 in the favor of Nate. Yeah, I think Sefty was a little bit too far away from his team members, got picked off there. Far for Bard saved that fight. You know, getting the revive on Orion and yep. that Swain damage just continuing chance. on for most of that fight. You know, I mean, even then you can see the power of the extended fight versus the burst there. Yeah. But I have to say, Nameless Umbra, they've been making some questionable aggressive plays. They should take a page from Dorado's book and learn when they chill out, sit back, relax, and let <laughs> the enemy come to you, pick up their free team fights. Don't have yeah. to go so hard for them. But they do save this game, because certainly with all Barons on all the team members there, possibly could have a route to victory for the battle. Quite scary as it stands. Only on three of their members. And we can kind of hit a little bit of a lull here, just a minute before the next dragon spawns. Let's check in on some of our item spikes here. Looks like Dookie getting very, very close to that rabbit spike. Meanwhile, on the bot side, Creatine trying to go for a third item, Infinity Edge. It looks like just trying to maximize his damage output as much as possible. They're setting up for this dragon here. Have some pretty good vision control. Yeah, that maybe a stray nameless member will face check their way around this area. Yeah, uh, key moment here, Orion. On oh, that's huge. Powerful Bard lives to ult another day. He's looking a little bit worse for wear, but yep, is still alive and kicking. Dragon spawning in just 20 short seconds. Orion looking for some poke damage here. Not going to find too much on to hybrid carry. Hard only for Bard. With that chunk out, looking at like he's at about 50% HP, both members, or sorry, both teams, five members strong around this dragon. Dorado can pull in Nameless Umbra into a bad face check here. I think that's going to be their angle that they're looking for. Ezreal's not landing any poke damage, so it's going to be full HP bars for the side of Dorado here. And yeah, they could be baited into a very bad fight. Yeah, that's going to be the Nami ultimate, just try and zone them away. They're going to try and finish off the dragon, and they do exactly that. But is there going to be an ensuing fight? The Taunt in the front line is getting the flash out of hybrid carry. It looks like the Rotor are just going to take their prize and get on out of dodge. Slow lands, but the speed up from Oriana yeah, is going to make up for it, and they are able to escape. Yeah, uh, for the side, they don't really have a hard I yeah. guess Olaf running in is kind of, and maybe never move from Swain, but nothing to really start a team fight very guaranteed. They're much better when the team runs into them, so it's hard for them to get the fight that they want, but no Ezreal poke pretty much guarantees that that, that dragon was not going to go their way. Yeah, 0-60 to 60, not able to really get involved in that fight at all. And um, yeah, before they knew it, the dragon was gone, and Dorado had escaped um, right away afterwards. So still a very close game, like we, we're, we're keeping on saying. It's two dragons apiece, 50,000 gold lead to either squad, and... Yeah, I like that you bring that up, uh, Crims, the, the lack of engage that that Nameless do have, because they are the team fighting composition, they want to be getting these 5v5s, but it's so, so hard for them to start it out on their own terms. And on the other side, you talked about how, yeah, Diana, Oriana, Nami, even the Lucian of the set, they all want to burst down uh, enemy champions, start out the fight on their own foot, and that means that they can just look for the fights that they want, kind of start things out however they so please, and saw it on great display right there in that dragon fight yeah you know when you get in those dragon fight situations it's it's when the nerves start to perk up or any big misstep is going to probably lose you the game and that's where it really tests the mental of the team so, so next objective we're really going to see the, the test of nerves who will break first and in a minute 30 that objective will be the pick well, so far, just some vision wars happening here around the Baron area. I think Nameless should realize after that dragon fight that they do want to be the first to these objectives. It really will allow them to set up uh, some vision control, allow the Ezreal to get some of that damage that you were uh, talking about that's so important for them. And that means that 
<coughs> Gerardo will have to come to them. Speaking of coming to them, Hybrid Carrion getting caught up here a little bit. 63 going to look for the ultimate down, but not a lot of damage coming out from that one. 60, enjoy your on the side, looking for some damage here. Hybrid Carry having to run for the hills. Creatine has to flash away as well. Teleport being channeled into the fray. Sefty potentially on a flank here. Has the ultimate as Is this going to be the Wombo combo? They pull them in. The Shockwave is going to find three. Two in the death chamber now. Zero to 60 and six degree on the run. Orion on the flank. Can he find the fight? Can he get into the mix? Can he do what the team needs from him? Zonia's for a moment. He's going to buy a time. Zero to 60 still full HP. Peppering away with a lot of these mystic shots. But there's just too much damage on the Dorado gaming side. Over the wall goes zero to 60 as his mid laner gets eviscerated on the opposite side. Flash forward from Dookie. They might find them all. 0 to 60 will go down. He's the last nameless member, and look at this. Septi has already TP'd into the bot side, pushing away, looking for a potential inhibitor, maybe even more. I don't think this will be the game ending push, but this is definitely Dorado Gaming sending a message. I think they could have went for the end here, but it's very close call, so I don't blame them for splitting up and getting as much on the map as possible. But Nameless, Umbra, you, we just made it, we were just talking about Nimbor. Your team doesn't have very good guaranteed engage. Mm -hmm. And they overforce, they try to chase down kills, they weren't able to lock down any targets to get the kill. And when you're and when you're running towards the opponent's running away, you don't get as much damage. And they get baited into a huge safety stun play right into hybrid carry ultimate. And then just get completely wiped in the team fight, no extended fight and no members going down from the side of Dorado Gaming. Pick up three objectives across the board, and all Nameless had to do was wait for objectives and let the opponent come to them. Yeah. I don't know if they understand how their team kind of works here. Doesn't seem like they're on the same page, to say the very least. Definitely, uh, I mean, I felt like they had some good vision control and, and some good map presence around the Baron, and then, like you say, just kind of overextend for that fight and putting themselves in a compromising position. Not going to be what you like to see if you are a nameless fan here in this one, but Dorado back uh, with a comfortable lead for themselves, at least in terms of the gold, and it looks like this dragon is going to be what they're focusing over for the next objective. And now, because of that play, they don't have control of this dragon. They have to do the face trick dance uh, yet again. And I'll be honest, Dorado's playing around the vision a lot better than Nameless this whole series so far. We'll see if Nameless can find an angle. They're pushing mid. This is a pretty decent response. Try to spread out, find multiple angles in. And they can threaten the Baron as well. I think that might be the play. Pull them towards you, threaten the Baron. We'll see what they go back for. A little bit of chip damage coming here back and forth. Uh, is Nameless actually able to get the wave pushing here in mid lane? Lucian is on the dragon as we speak, so trying to chip that one down is going to be able to grab that one as Nameless push it down in the mid lane. Dragon has claimed. True Shepard is actually very close to stealing that one, but now Orion might be in a bit of trouble. Hard only for Bard has been found out. The Shockwave will find its mark, pulling him back in. Nameless very, very split up now in this fight as Dorado Gaming divide and conquer here, potentially looking for the pickoff. That's going to be a nice Nami ultimate. They're looking for Katan, who's running for the hills, calling, and the Diana ultimate going to be expended. Now six degrees into the backside. He's got some shadows to juke around, but he gets suplexed and taken on out. Two for zero. So far in the fight, 0-60 to 60 and Bard on the run. Orion really can't do much for his team here either. There's oh, look minions at the, look at the in their outside. base. Yeah, the super minions are pushing, threatening the Nexus Towers here for Nameless Umbra, and that means that Baron is going to be the objective here for Dorado Gaming. They claim the team fight. They've outmaneuvered Nameless. They're going to be able to make the macro play with the pressure in the bot side and grab the objective for themselves. They were able to pick up the dragon and the baron on top of winning a fight. That is a lot of W's in a row for Dorado Gaming. And I have to give them credit because I think their comp was the one that would have a harder time winning in that current game state. And because of the play on the map, now they're ahead and in a comfortable position yet again. Yeah, absolutely true. We'll see what they can get done with this baron. Teleport is available for Dookie very shortly will also be available for Sepni, so we'll see. Can we get uh, a vision for for blue team here? Because it's looking pretty dark for this side here. And I see a lot of dragons, a lot of objectives in front of them. Oh, but here they go. Hard only for Bard is oh, going to be the focus. Not even time to hit his R key. And now it's 5v4 on the map. Dorado game surely will be looking for the victory push here. 
hybrid carry fearlessly stepping forward. They're gonna look to melt away on this tower. Zero to 60 was tasked with clearing the bot wave, but now potentially the engagement coming forward. Dynamic Ultimate is gonna pull them back in, or rather, sorry, that was the shock wave. Orion into the stopwatch for a moment. Here goes six degree, but Zonia's is gonna prevent any of the Zed damage from going through, so six degree not able to get anything done in this. Now, the push on the top side from Sefti and the rest of the squad are going to look to completely destroy Nameless's base here. Sefti, for a potential engage, not quite able to find it here just yet. There will be the focus. Creatine and Duki taking some top shots there on that one. And yeah, again, it seems like the lack of engage from Nameless Umbra means that they are never able to find a way into this game. Yeah, they... The way that they get the fights that they want is to be an objective first, and this comes into them, and they will, I mean, most surely they would have cleaned house in that, in those front fights. However, when it comes to them trying to get the fight going their way without these, uh, without the map control, it's really rough for them. Yeah, and especially now, soul points uh, going to be available momentarily. Yeah, we flick over to the vision here. They just can't see anything. They have one uh, one ward in this tri rush over here. Otherwise, the map is basically just completely dark. They're able to pet for a couple wards uh, into their red side quadrant here, but it's not going to mean too much because Dorado are coming in to clear it all out right away. And Dragon spawning in just a minute and a half. That's surely going to be what Dorado are waiting for here. They have a little bit extra time on their Baron. So maybe they want to take advantage of the last 15 seconds here and get some minions pushing in, get some pressure in the nameless base. And then from there, it should be fairly simple for them to go. If you ask me, I don't think they should go for the dragon. They should push in all the waves, get this last in hit, and with all of the, the siege minions, just win this game. But we'll see. The problem is they do have to engage in the end of the game. So that is a bit rough. Sefti has Flash, and so does Hybrid Carry here. So they're two engagers, you have the tools necessary. It's just a matter yeah, of whether they can find the correct angle. Yeah, that's a lot of focus. But there, here it goes! Shockwave into the Diana Ultimate. This is going to be the team fighting win. It could be Orion into the stopwatch for a moment. Katan does the same, but it might be too little too late. Zero to 60 has already been eviscerated. The revive comes through onto Orion. He is going to heal basically to full HP. Can he make the hero play? Can he keep his team alive? No, it's not going to be enough. The answer from Dorado comes through and Crims, you made the absolute right call. Who needs a dragon soul? Dorado will take the victory. That was... Look, we don't have boring games here. Those last two games were absolutely exciting. Any... I mean, before we talk about the analysis of that game, Lindor, what did you think about how fun this series was overall? Yeah, that was a pretty fun series. I think uh, game one was a little bit uh, more boring than kind of the action that we got from game two and game three there. But yeah, I mean, it, it was a pleasure to watch. I think uh, both game two and game three could have gone either way. So that always keeps things entertaining. Yeah, and you know, we were questioning Dorado could close out games. And you know what? I think they can. I think it's pretty confident. I think they were just playing that first game <clears throat> ultra safe, but mm -hmm. that is exactly how they wanted to play that team comp. And in games two and three, you can, and even game two, you could see that they were willing to make the plays to win the game. And in game three, it worked out for them in wonders as they pick up the win and they secure themselves that buy into playoffs. I think that is going to be the biggest win for them of the day here. Yep. Absolutely. And important victory for them. For sure. Yeah, going to lock themselves into one of those top two spots. Of course, they will be still fighting uh, for that number one position heading into the playoffs. But yeah, it means they don't have to go through the playoff qualifiers and will be uh, free to kind of experiment, you know, maybe make a, a few adaptations here and there through the last couple of weeks of play. For Nameless, though, with this loss, it does mean that they're going to have to go through the qualifying tournament. They have locked their spot at the very least in that tournament, but are going to have to fight their way to the playoffs themselves. 
themselves. So I think they had a decent showing here um, in, in a lot of ways, but obviously they do have a few things to work on. I think that there were probably some miscommunications and a few times where it didn't feel like they were all on the same page and didn't all have the same understanding of how they wanted to play out a, a few of these scenarios. So they've got a couple weeks here before the end of the season. Definitely need to show up a few of those weaknesses as they move forward. Yeah, I think that it's a bit unfortunate because I think in in game three especially that they had the win in the bag, as you could, you would say, and a few misplays there were the doom for them. And I think in game one they were they were on their way to an early victory as well, if I'm correct. So that um, was a, in in that which was game three? Game one, game one. Mm. They were winning until that rift herald play. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They had some good coordination happening. Um, and yeah, things kind of all started to fall apart against the scaling composition. Um, but yeah, ultimately, you know, uh, it's going to be the win for Dorado Crims. We have one more job to do, and that is to award a series MVP. So I'm going to hand it off to you. Who do you got here today? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that is tough. Who is the MVP? So. Uh, game one. Obviously, it's creatine on the Twitch. And then game mm -hmm. two, I'd yep. probably give it to six degrees. So now it's up to game three. Oh, that's tough because I'll, I guess I have I, I have to give it to Dookie for overall play throughout the series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to give it to Dookie for overall play through the series. And that's purely because game three, I'm going to be honest, creatine, the, the two plays bot side did not work out very well. And those were on execution errors by you. So, I yeah. can't give it to you, but I would have. I would have. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Dookie had the, the Victor game, the, uh, excuse me, the Ari game, game number one, and then, of course, that Oriana showing right there. Definitely uh, showing us the power of the Diana Oriana combo combo. I, I like to see it. So, yeah, congratulations to Dookie on the MVP. And congratulations to Dorado, securing that spot in to playoffs with a nice showing here today. Crims, do you have any uh, any last words before we close this one out for the night? Uh, no, I think I've said all that I wanted to, other than that was a nice game. Enjoy casting it. A lot of exciting things happening. And I also enjoy production from Hiccup here. And, yes. of course, my co-caster, Lindor. I think you're doing an excellent job here. Thank so you. Thank you. Yeah, it was a, it was a pleasure once again, Crims, and of course, yes, hiccup uh, behind the keyboard there, making it uh, making it all happen for us. We're gonna do it without him, so huge shout out to him. All right, well, that'll do it for us here tonight. We will be uh, back live tomorrow night. If you want to check out the stream, we're gonna be casting the CCS Diamond League week number one tomorrow, and otherwise, stay tuned for some more nameless content next week. We will see you all next time. Have a good night.